Adrian College Television would like to give a big thank you to our sponsor, Carlton Lodge of Adrian. Carlton Lodge is sponsoring all ACTV broadcasts during the 2021 to 2022 school year. Located at 1629 West Maumee and Adrian, Carlton Lodge offers comfortable rooms and suites at affordable rates. There's also a heated indoor and outdoor pool along with a 24-hour fitness center. Thank you for the continued support toward Adrian College Television.
For those of us on this stage, today is one of the most exciting days of the year. We love to see the wonder and anticipation in the eyes of our new students as all of you anxiously await all of the amazing experiences that will define the years ahead. Welcome to Adrian, Michigan. We're located in a proud college town. Adrian College is situated just 45 minutes from Ann Arbor, Detroit, and Toledo. We're very excited to show you just a little bit of what AC has to offer. This is the gateway to our campus. Welcome to the place that we believe will change the rest of your life. AC features one of the most well-rounded educational experiences in the country. We offer over 60 different academic majors and 10 academic institutes, as well as dozens of student organizations. Year after year, we've been ranked as one of the nation's best colleges, including being one of the most innovative institutions in the U.S. for our medical programs. Our campus is simply beautiful. Our student to faculty ratio is an incredible 13 to one. That means more attention for you and a much better overall learning environment. We know how to put together an education that is life changing. And these are just some of the highlights. From our communication arts program, to our many performing arts, to the home Welcome to Adrian, Michigan. 
We're located in a proud college town. Adrian College is situated just 45 minutes from Ann Arbor, Detroit, and Toledo. We're very excited to show you just a little bit of what AC has to offer. This is the gateway to our campus. Welcome to the place that we believe will change the rest of your life. AC features one of the most well-rounded educational experiences in the country. We offer over 60 different academic majors and 10 academic institutes, as well as dozens of student organizations. Year after year, we've been ranked as one of the nation's best colleges, including being one of the most innovative institutions in the U.S. for our medical programs. Our campus is simply beautiful. Our student to faculty ratio is an incredible 13 to one. That means more attention for you and a much better overall learning environment. We know how to put together an education that is life changing. And these are just some of the highlights. From our communication arts program, to our many performing arts, to the home of business on campus, to our sciences and medical studies, we have the spaces where you can grow into the professional that you want to become. Our first year student experience is award winning. You'll make lifelong friends here, meet mentors, and maybe even meet that special someone. The Kane Student Center is open 24 hours a day, and there's a lot going on here. The Bulldog Beanery has all of your hot drinks. Pause and Go is our on-campus convenience store. The bookstore is where you'll get all of your Bulldog gear, and you can just hang out and study in the skyboxes. Not far away is the Shipman Library. The Shipman has quiet, relaxing spaces for you to study in. You can check out books from thousands of libraries around the country, and the Shipman is open 24 hours as well for your convenience. There are hundreds of learning opportunities on campus. In addition to the arts and beautiful facilities, Adrian College is known for its athletic programs. There is nothing like a Saturday game day here in Adrian. The Bulldog football team are 11-time MIAA champions. At Docking Stadium, fans watch soccer, lacrosse, football, and more. Just a few hundred yards away, Adrian College's basketball teams compete. In addition to basketball, fans can enjoy wrestling, acro and tumbling, and volleyball here. We also have a state-of-the-art weight room available to all of our students. When things heat up too much on campus, you can cool off with our ice sports. Our NCAA ice hockey teams are constantly battling in the national playoffs. Just a quick walk down the service drive, we feature one of the best baseball and softball programs in the nation at our level. Soon you'll be able to cross the street and watch men's and women's rugby take to the pitch as well. Our rowing, crew, and top-ranked bass fishing programs compete out of the Adrian College Boathouse, a gorgeous facility, just a 15-minute drive north on Devil's Lake. Our students know how to relax in their downtime. When they're not out and about, we have dozens of housing options on campus. With apartments right in the mix of things, you can pick what works best for you. We've also recently renovated a few of our housing options. Adrian College is a Methodist affiliated institution that has been changing lives since 1859. The modern liberal arts education offered by our faculty is unrivaled. We can't wait to have you on campus and show you around. Visit adrian.edu to schedule a full campus visit today. We'll see you soon.
Moving over Murphy! Well, Spencer has to watch the victory scores! In the slot! What a goal! Looking for the game! He scores! What a shot! Fire me like the last history! Continue to take pride and learn from Asim Han's leadership today. And the slam! 161 years of commitment to harnessing the power of creativity, ingenuity, community, and academic excellence. I believe that if you get your degree here, the world is going to feel like it's shrinking. Adrian College Television would like to give a big thank you to our sponsor, Carlton Lodge of Adrian. Carlton Lodge is sponsoring all ACTV broadcasts during the 2021 to 2022 school year. Located at 1629 West Maumee and Adrian, Carlton. They say nothing quite compares to the feeling of playoff hockey. The stakes are high, heartbeat racing faster as we near puck drop. A whole season leading up to this game, and for these two teams, it's win or go home. Live from Adrian, Michigan, it's the quarter final round of the NCAA Men's Division III playoffs between the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point and your Adrian College Bulldogs. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome inside Arrington Ice Arena. Alex Herman and Calvin Keyes here live on ACTV. The atmosphere right now, absolutely electric, Calvin. And Quite frankly, there's a lot of history between the Pointers and the Bulldogs over the past few years. Can certainly classify this out-of-conference game as a rivalry matchup. Yeah, it's interesting. These two teams have a lot of history, but they haven't faced off for a little while. Last time they played each other was in the 2017-18 season. As you said, they played 16 out-of-conference games against one another. But interestingly enough, Stevens Point, who may be considered the underdog in this matchup, they have the 9-6-1 lead all-time in the all-time series, and they've won four of the last five meetings. Granted, since they have not played since the 2017-18 season, we have a whole new group of players, so it's a whole new dynamic, a whole new ball game, if you will. Now, it's going to be interesting to see how these two teams compare tonight because, like you said, Calvin, on paper, Adrian has the larger number of higher point getters on their roster. The Bulldogs' top five points leaders all have over a point per game. Yeah, a lot of scorers that have been performing on a very high level this year for Adrian. 
You look at they've got six or five different guys that are all have 30 plus points, including you look at guys like Matus Spodniak leading the nation in points in NCAA Division Three hockey. Ty ends 41 points this year. Alessio Luciani. The list goes on. So for the pointers, defense is going to have to come first if they want to shut Adrian down. Now on the other side, Stephen Point's only player who's close to the point per game mark is going to be their leading points getter, Fletcher Anderson, who has 28 points in 29 games. But while on the surface, that might be mildly concerning, they do have a lot of scoring through the depth of their roster, and they spread out their points throughout their entire team. Yeah, you look at Stevens Point, they've scored at least four or more goals in uh, regulation in a bunch of games, four out of their last five games to be exact. And I think you look at a lot of teams that perform at a high caliber, even all the way up to the NHL, you don't have to rely on one guy. A lot of those championship level teams, they have skill spread all throughout their lineup, which makes them difficult to get matchups, especially for Adrian head coach Adam Krug going into this one. The other big factor coming into the matchup is definitely going to be goaltending. Nick Tallarico is going to get the start tonight for the Bulldogs, followed alongside with Ryan Wagner. Both have great numbers this season, and we're going to look to backstop their teams. Yeah, it's interesting to think about. Tallarico, as well as Dershawn Stewart, were splitting time earlier on in the year for Adrian, but with Stewart going down to injury, Tallarico's kind of taken over the net, and he hasn't looked back. He's 13-3-0 on the year, 908 save percentage, 241 goals against average. On the other side of things, Ryan Wagner has a really great record, too, 25-4. 931 save percentage and a 1.64 goals against average. Not to mention, he's wearing a C on his sweater this season for Stevens Point. He's a leader from the goal, so certainly some competent goaltenders in this matchup, Alex. That he is, and tonight's going to be a fun one, so we'll step aside just for a moment for the national anthem. This is the NCAA Men's Division Three quarterfinal matchup. Alex Herman and Calvin Keyes returning to you next with the start of the first period. Adrian College Television would like to give a big thank you to our sponsor, Carlton Lodge of Adrian. Carlton Lodge is sponsoring all ACTV broadcasts during the 2021 to 2022 school year. Located at 1629 West Maumee and Adrian, Carlton Lodge offers comfortable rooms and suites at affordable rates. There's also a heated indoor and outdoor pool along with a 24 hour fitness center. Thank you for the continued support toward Adrian College Television. Inside Arrington Ice Arena, ladies and gentlemen, it's the quarterfinal round of the men's NCAA Division III hockey playoffs between the visiting Wisconsin of Stevens Point Pointers and your Adrian College Bulldogs. Hello, everyone. My name is Alex Herman, joined alongside by Calvin Keyes. And boy, this is going to be an exciting game tonight. It's going to be a fun one, Alex. You talk about two perennial powerhouses in NCAA Division III ice hockey year after year. Teams that have a history, albeit haven't played in a while, and going to be a lot of talent on the ice. I, I think we're going to be in for a treat this evening. Now, Adrian College skating in with a 24-2 overall record, 13-4-1 in the NCHA conference. On the other side, Stevens Point, 25-4 overall on the season with a 12-2-1 conference record in the WIAC. 
both teams to note won their conference in the regular season. So coming off of really good ends to the regular start, and we're up at center ice. 20 minutes on the score clock, and we are underway at the AIA. It's playoff hockey time. Starting things out, a quick dump in is sent in by Zach Heinz. Collected on the near side wall, same aid will play that to his near. Quick ups, it's Northey. We'll send this back down low. Swade will go to interject as Spencer is crunched hard into the boards. Trying to play it up to break things free as Spencer will get back to it on the possession. Going to help there, Swade. A fast start just 30 seconds in. Body certainly flying there and a big hit made by Dawson Ciarino. Back down low, tie ends. Gets a pass from his own end. We'll look to move this up, and it's Swade who was able to chop it down low as it whistles wide. Long pass as Tallarico unintentionally touched the puck there. So the whistle will not be blown for the icing, and here's a chance. Shot taken wide. That moves horizontally right to left. There's another chance. Tallarico got a piece of it there with a the goalie paddle. This pass shakes around now down low. It's Anderson. Looked like Iowa Dinier was caught up there with Anderson looking for a call, but it's not going to get one. Spodniak down low in the slot for Redding. Had his head down, couldn't catch the pass. Moving quickly with it, Anderson will dump this on the goal front. Tallarico, easy pad stave, moves it to his right, and our TV left. Scary puck there as it played in between the feet of David Hill. Couldn't control it, so we'll continue on. Calgin. Stepping up with a body contact. Spodniak rips a shot. And a blocker save moved aside by Ryan Wagner. What happened there on the Adrian zone was Fletcher Anderson gave a bit of a reverse hit to Adenier, and then Adenier got his stick tangled up. So it looked initially like Adenier held him. But in the end, it was a good no call by the referee as it was just two bodies coming together and both going down to the ice in a heap. And Fletcher Anderson, the leading points getter for the pointers. 14 goals, 14 assists, and a quick break for May. Overskated the puck just a little bit, too far out of his reach. Could have been an early chance there for the Bulldogs to jump on the board. 17.37 left to go here in the first period. Playoff hockey at Arrington Ice Arena. Quarterfinal round here in the NCAA Division III. I think we're seeing a bit of the feeling out process here in the early stages. Players are a little bit jumpy, getting themselves involved physically and hoping to settle in as this first period goes on. And this is a big rink environment. Arrington Ice Arena completely sold out as a chance here, and a one-time followed up by a nice save from Tallarico as he shoulders this off. This one bounces off the apron and almost to the top of the crease. Matthew falls there with the first quality opportunity of this hockey game. Sam Aid kept things going on his own blue line. We'll look to move things on. Now on the possession is Cameron Babiak. Slowly looking for an option. Finally finds it in Klein. We'll bounce this up the wall, and it's Northey who will stop it. He's checked hard into the board, spins off Klein. A backhand pass all down low, Murphy. They had to interfere, stops that chance from reaching the net. Here's a break for the Bulldogs. With some speed is Summers to the front, fires and a kick save made by Wagner. Turning up the other way quickly with speed. It's Humberstone, dumps that in and Tallarico is snowed as he went to go cover up the puck and Spencer will come together. One of those unwritten rules that you see you know, I really don't fault Brett Humberstone too much for that one because the puck was still loose. It was a last second move by Tallarico to cover it up. So that's why Humberstone, it did look like he caught him a little bit late. I think I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt there. There was nothing malicious about that. Just really seeing the loose puck and trying to pounce at it, on it as you're taught as a forward. I have to agree with you that there, Calvin. There wasn't a whole lot of real estate to work with, but the puck still was loose. But nonetheless, we'll take the face off left side offensive zone for the pointers as Jake Swade and Andrew Pulius will step in the dot. This shot rattled wide and a fanned on chance there by Ciarino. Quickly it's Swade up the left wing, looking towards the front. Sails one high over the blocker side of Ryan Wagner. Just about four minutes gone. Two shots apiece for both sides. The pointers in their purple jerseys and the Bulldogs in their white. Swade connects up ice with Ryder. 
finds its way to Heinz. A backhand pass in the chest. Wagner with the hold. That was excellent puck movement from the Bulldogs in the neutral zone. They worked it to the near side of the rink, then found the seam to the far side. I believe it was Jake Swade who found his teammate there. And that's how you spread thin a team that's usually defensively stalwart, like Stevens Point, force them to cover the entire sheet of ice, and that'll open up gaps in which to attack. Luciani wins the draw clean on the second swipe after the puck was dropped, and here's Redding. Fires a shot, kicked out loose scramble. Luciani couldn't put it home. He was on the doorstep. Gets pushed down to the ice by Heenigan. Great defensive work by Isaac Moberg there, tying up the stick of Luciani as the puck was loose right in front of a waning net. Far side corner. Puck battle is tied up. A wraparound chance. Kept out by a nice pad save from Tallarico. Circling down low was Heenigan as he's pushed into the wall and the puck forced out of the zone. Long pass way up ice. Here's Luciani, all alone, scores! Alessio Luciani lights the lamp and it's one to nothing Bulldogs. What a pass from the opposite end of the ice. It does not get any prettier than that. Yeah, this is a, something we've seen from Adrian a lot so far in this game. Looking to move in transition, they find Luciani in behind and he rips it right over the glove hand of the Stevens Point goaltender, Ryan Wagner. So just about five minutes into the first period, it's the Bulldogs who strike first and find their first tally of the evening. You know, it's interesting, as I just mentioned, the Bulldogs have been looking to work in transition a lot so far in this game as the pointers go off sides. Stevens Point has had the majority of the offensive zone time early on in this game, but the Bulldogs have just been able to quickly get the puck and move up ice with pace to try and catch the pointers off guard. And as Stevens Point was in the middle of a line change, that's what they were able to do right there. A sneaky play drawn up there for the Bulldogs, executed perfectly. And we'll see how the pointers respond in the next couple of minutes. Tallarico overplayed the puck there as it shook around the outside kick plate. This time he'll get a second attempt, but the puck popped up and into the netting. Officials didn't see it. So we'll continue on. It's Babiak down low. Klein right back to Babiak. Babiak will start moving forwards. Calgin receives a pass and dumps it in. It was on net, pushed aside easily by Wagner. Adinier has to go backwards to go forwards, and Klein will send this up the near side wall. Murphy dumps it down low. Summers will win the puck race against Aromatrio. Saucer pass intended for Northey. It's Tallarico out to play it. Adinie put that around, but it bounced off of a shin pad. I believe it was Harrison Stewart who got in front of that one. There you see the applause for the Luciani goal. Murphy, left side. One too many stick handles. Couldn't provide the shooting lane that he was looking for. Fader. Oh, There's penalty up coming to Murphy here for a hook. Yeah, he's hooked up and off to the bench is Wagner to get the extra attacker, but it's whistled down quickly as the puck was touched up. And a huge opportunity now for the pointers to try and even things up. It's Riley Murphy who's going to be called down two minutes for a hook. Yeah, I don't think Murphy has much of an argument there. The, the pointer player was skating ahead of him. He got his stick up and under the armpit, dragged him down. And uh, for Stevens Point, this is a big opportunity to try and even the score here down one nothing in the early stages of the first. Luciani not able to win it back. Heenigan up top at the right point, eagerly waiting for a pass. This is cycled back down low. A shot and a shoulder save made by Tallarico on his right side post towards his blocker. Up top, Heenigan. Back down low, quickly moving with it, creating some space. A Ciarina, horizontally over for Anderson. Walks the right side, trying to make something happen, pushes back down low under the red, and skating with it is Witherspoon. 
Walks the outside, six save made by Tallarico, and it's gloved over the blue. A nice clear there, as the Bulldogs will try and kill off more time on their penalty kill. A nice move by Heenigan at center ice. He crosses over the blue, it's on sides. Right side wing. Opens up, has options. Pushes up top to the left blue. Aramatrio moving over. Ciarino tried to take a shot, and stepping in was Redding, who stopped him in the shooting motion and helped clear once again. Junker to Io, who saucers along the way for Fader. Spagnolo down deep. White and purple sweaters jockeying for possession. It's kicked back up top to the blue, and a save by Tallarico as he holds up with the glove. And that's the first save that I think Tallarico's had to make on the penalty kill for Adrian. Stevens Point doing a good job possessing the puck, keeping it to the outside, but the Bulldogs doing a good job of containing them to the outside and not allowing them to get penetration and quality looks on net. I like the hard work lunch pail mentality there to dig it off the wall and get it up to your point though. You gotta win those puck battles, especially on the power play if you wanna generate offense. This is one back at Denier. We'll rim it up top off the high glass. Went, tried to get in front of it to break it up. Couldn't do it. We'll try a second time as it took a half, skipping a bounce over his stick. Kept in just barely and pushed back down low. To it first is Luciani. Excuse me, that was Ryder. Penalty will expire, Murphy out of the box, and the Bulldogs have killed off the first penalty of the game, and we're back to even strength hockey. Went. We'll loft this in as Murphy was checked as he was entering the zone. That was a huge hit by Jake Tice on Terry Ryder behind the play too, may I add. Got to finish your checks, come playoff time, send a message, don't make anything easy for your opposition. Junker. Sent hard into the boards by the body of Jake Swade. Moberg crosses over, lost it on the entry, and it's lifted back the other way. Long pass isn't in front of the red, and this will be whistled down for an icing with 10.57 left to go here in the first period. Quarterfinal NCAA playoff matchup here live on ACTV in Adrian, Michigan, coming to you from the beautiful Arrington Ice Arena. Alex, this is you and I's first time watching the Stevens Point squad in person. So far, I've been really impressed by Isaac Moberg, the uh, junior out of St. Paul, Minnesota. He's a great center. He's what you'd call a river skater, just long, smooth strides, able to generate some real speed, and he's been great on both ends of the rink so far. Spencer trying to keep things going. as a long shot, pinballed off of a shin pad in front. Kainz was looking for the deflection, but didn't get it. Moberg. Just as you talked about, Calvin, looks to enter. Checked hard into the boards and taken out there by Enns. Ty Enns really has a big frame. You gotta have your head on a swivel when he's out there with you. Back down low towards the right side. Enns will touch up. Moving this around the way. Getting there first. It's Zach Heinz kept in. Long shot negated and it crosses over the blue. Trying to keep it in with Sam Aid. Falls, breaking loose. A high shot sails over the crossbar. Luciani crunched into the near side boards right in front of the Adrian student section. Looks like the women's NCAA Division III team here of Adrian College sporting their black and gold jerseys. And here's a turnover. Quickly with speed is Redding if he can reach the front in time. Moving it over is Spodniak and a save made by Wagner. That is an important save just about over the halfway point here in this first period and one to remember for sure. Yeah, again, it's just in transition. A bit of a sloppy giveaway there at the point from Mick Hennahan and uh, Hennigan rather, and that's what set up the opportunity. Props to Wagner though for shutting the door. That's a big save. Calgin on the circle tried to fire was blocked by the stick of Junker. In neutral, Austin Klein sends this in. I think that tipped off of the stick of Nick Gonrowski. It's turned the other way, caught him by surprise. Here's Witherspoon, will send this up. 
Babiak caught a feel of it, just barely. Out of his reach, though. Stewart with a shot. Kick save, Tallarico. Humberstone, a long drive. That one wouldn't go, and there's an arm up. A cross-checking call. It's going to be on Cam Babiak. Yeah. There was a net front battle going on, and Babiak just got the, the cross-check right in the small of the back of one of the pointer players' net front. It's good as a defenseman to try and clear out the crease, give your goaltender a clear sight line, but that's not the way to do it. So the second power play this evening for the Wisconsin Stephen Point pointers were unsuccessful on their first try. But they'll look to rewrite the script here with 9.04 left to go in the first period. What a great atmosphere in here as we got to take a look at the Adrian College pep band. Packed house, bands from both schools are in the building. It's definitely a fun vibe in Arrington right now. Possessed, Junker, a shot, blocker save made by Tallarico. Move towards the outside. Jumping to keep it in is Thies. Down low, under the red. Pushed over to the right, it's Io. Left side point, D to D to Junker. A long shot, once again, kick save, moved out by Tallarico. That drive was sent wide to the glove side. Junker keeps it in though, just barely. Scraping the outside of the blue. Swede goes to pressure against Aromatrio. Props to the official for dodging that one. That was headed straight for his dome. That was a heater there. <laughs> Isn't wearing a visor either. <laughs> no, he is not. Unusual in these days of hockey. A quick side chance there. Tallarico holds the post well, and he'll get the whistle. And Sam Ide getting into it with Hunter Wentz a bit there. Tallarico standing tall yet again. We talked in the pregame about how he's been on a really, really hot stretch as of late. Initially, it was more of a tandem. Adrian head coach Adam Krug was using Deshaun Stewart and Nick Tallarico equally. Stewart goes down to injury. Tallarico's taken over the net, and he has played really, really well ever since. This is one back. Heenigan, right side. Anderson walking in. Fires a shot deflected wide. Ringing around. Heenigan once again. Near side. Stick save. Tallarico. Alexa stay down in the RVH position. 57 seconds left to go on the pointer's power play. Looking to get something done. A swiping paddle from Tallarico keeps that chance out, and it's lifted, cleared the length of the ice, and the Bulldogs will make a line change. In the neutral zone, Witherspoon. Anderson walks in, fires a shot, that one off the end wall. Poking it free was May. Gets this to Murphy, a shorthanded chance to the front and put it just high over the crossbar as it touched up in the netting. Oh, we'll here get we a go. Whistle. Some more extracurriculars. We talked about it a little bit in the pre-show. A lot of history between these two teams. When they used to play out of conference games a number of years ago, you had the expectation that the game was going to be very physical. Both teams pushing the body around, getting a little bit too familiar with the other side. And it's been a while since these two sides have played. So the expectation is things settling down here. Neither of these two teams have players that have faced off in collegiate play. So the hope thing to see the game stay a little bit more cordial than we're used to. Continuing on, 12 seconds in the five on four. Pointer's not able to get anything done yet. Ryder rimming around up against the glass as Stewart will keep it in. Waiting eagerly to get out of the box is Babiak, and he does. Back to five on five, even strength hockey. Bulldogs still lead one to nothing by the goal from Alessio Luciani. Adinier lost his stick down low, goes to retrieve it. As the play stays on the left side, Moline will try and make a play. Pressed hard there by May. Ryder, a bouncing puck hit off the outside of the apron. Tallarico didn't know where it was, and Luckily, he didn't bounce in front. That's what I was going to say. Tallarico lost it, and David Hill with a chance as the net was open, sent it off the side of the goal. With speed galloping is Finstrom. A long pass. It's touched by Summers. The icing is waved off. Looked like Summers touched that behind center ice, so that Bulldog's fortunate to have that one waved. In between, a chance, and somehow off the stick of Spagnolo, this is kept out. I don't know if Wagner got a piece of it. 
but it did not cross the line as it shook just barely wide. This is played off the end wall, traveled in front to Tallarico. Chase Spencer just had his stick hacked in half by Noah Finstrom. He's upset about it. Here's a chance, a loose puck scramble, and this one kept out by Tallarico. It that bounced around quite a lot there. Jaden Shields dove after that puck, the Adrian College defenseman to knock it away, otherwise it would be a 1-1 game right now. Heenigan, oppressed by Swade, pushed hard into the boards with some force. Babiak will try and lift this out, and he does. A soccer chess play by Heenigan as he won possession just for a moment, but then lost it in the end. Bulldogs are fortunate to get out of their zone and get a change because one of their defensemen, Chase Spencer, was without a twig. So now they got two defensemen with sticks, which is always important, being able to play. Oh, the and a big hit from Swade, and he's going to get called down for this one. Laid down the boom against Jake Thies, and he is unhappy. We'll catch it here on the replay. Oh, my goodness. This is a look at the scoring chance for the Bulldogs moments ago. Dante Spagnolo right on the doorstep and somehow missed the net. See if we can get another look at the, uh, the hit from Jake Swade that ended up in the penalty. We'll get it right here. Jake Swade's gonna sit two minutes for the rough as we'll catch the replay of the hit. Watch him skate through neutral. Comes over to this right side. Big hit there along the wall. I, I hate to say it, Alex, I was clean shoulder to shoulder. Yep. I, it was a huge hit. I can see it. it sent his opponent violently into the board, so maybe boarding could be the call there, but looked pretty clean to me from what I saw. All right, so the third chance on the power play just in this frame for the pointers. You think Stevens Point, Stevens Point is going to make them pay here sooner or later on the power play? Bulldogs need better discipline here. Fanning on a shot was Witherspoon. It was fed by Anderson. He holds the outside, walks down low, Gets a give and go pass and puts it up top for Heenigan. Back for Anderson. Puts this on. The easy seeing eye save for Tallarico. And he'll hold up with the glove. Obviously, we saw Tallarico had a pretty clear sight line on that shot from Fletcher Anderson. But down a goal, they haven't really been generating a lot of shots on their power play. I say at this juncture, shoot the puck. If you have a look on goal, probably take it. And maybe we can get a redirect or something if you're the pointers. Potosha will step in with Pulius, Bulldogs still down five on four for the next minute and 31 seconds. This time will tick down. This puck cleared the length of the ice by Matt Redding. And out to play it is Wagner. Wales this one around the boards. And Heenigan will look up ice and drop backwards for Anderson. A let's go Bulldogs chant coming now from the crowd. Moved over, here's Anderson. Top of the circle, back the other way for Heenigan. A one-time drive, and it bounces in! The pointers have evened the game up at one on the power play. And I'll be interested to see this replay. Immediately, Terry Ryder, Adrian defenseman, was signaling for a kicking motion. Let's take another look here. It goes off of Andrew Pulius in front of the net. Oh, that did go off the skate of Pulius, but I think he's in the clear because it wasn't a kicking motion. It was more him opening his skate blade up to direct it in. So I think, I think this goal should count. An unfortunate bounce for the Bulldogs as things are evened up on the power play. Honestly, that was a really smart read by Pulius. So he didn't have enough time to get his stick onto the puck, but just to be able to open up your skate in that manner to direct it into the goal, that's a real heads up play. Didn't kick or anything, just using the skate to direct it in. Really smart play. Coach Adam Krug looking to get the explanation, seeing if the call can be changed. And it looks like it might be under review here as the officials will step inside the circle to have a discussion. Julius, the junior from Whitby, Ontario. Second leading scorer with 25 points and 28 games for the pointers this season. That's his 14th of the year and proves the 29 points on the season. Take another look at the replay. So it started up here at the point.
good perimeter movement from the pointers. They send it into the middle of the ice, left side, and then, yeah, I mean, I don't see a kick. Pulius didn't have enough time to react and create a kicking motion, so I don't think there's much of an argument here, but Adrian coach Adam Krug is going to do everything he can to try and keep this goal off the board, but by all indications, I think it's going to stand, Alex. Yeah. So it's Pulias who evens things up. The third attempt on the power play this period, and we sit at an even one-to-one -one hockey score with 3.52 left to go in the first period. Adrian will try and look for a quick response. We said that continuing to take penalties, Stevens Point was eventually going to make the Bulldogs play, and that's what they did. All tied up at one here. Message definitely on the bench has to be Got to stay a little bit more disciplined if you're wearing the white, yellow, and black at the moment. They've taken three penalties, as we've mentioned, and unfortunately, the third one costing them. Shields, a quick one touch for Enns as he moved to the outside. We'll go D to D. Teeing up is a shot, and that one whistled wide. That one had eyes on it. Neutral ice, shoveling it in is Moberg. Back to retrieve it is Klein. It's kicked off of a skate and is pushed up. Here's Matu Spadniak to Luciani with speed to the front. Couldn't make it happen as looked like he was starting to go for a wraparound, but the body contact kept him out of the lane. That's a great defense by Harrison Stewart, the 6-1 defenseman using his frame to muscle off Luciani from any sort of a high danger area. Klein, a bouncer off the kick plate. A shot taken on, loose! Tallarico had it, it was under his arm. The official couldn't see it, that it had popped out, so a quick whistle. Awarded to the Adrian Netminder. 2.16 left to go here in the first. That puck was sitting right in the blue paint, Alex. Tallarico getting some help from the official with that whistle. And I don't think it would have mattered because the Adrian defenseman got there first to clear it away, but boy, that was a close call. Just went off the underside of Tallarico's blocker. What's cool about this game, too, don't know if the audio fully picks up here on the broadcast, but both bands from both schools here in attendance, the Adrian College Pep Band as well as the Stevens Point Pep Band. And they're kind of going battle of the band style back and forth in between whistles when we don't get music over the PA. Gives it a real college hockey atmosphere. That it does. The guys on the ice aren't the only one competing. Yes. Who has the better band is the other contest tonight. You be the judge at home. Halgen will swipe for it as it gets to the stick of Ao. It's moved down low with Dinier. Will pull up and play this towards the blue. It squeaks out. Leading the rush is Potosha. Breaking to the front, popped over his stick. Calgen pulled up with his hit. Looked like he was going to lay down a shoulder. Ryder off the end wall. Sticked aside by Wagner. A backhand. Loose in front. Nobody could pick it up through traffic. And it's moved back over the blue. I'm impressed with the defense of this pointer team. They're doing a really good job of picking up their assignments around the net and tying up sticks. Here's May. Moves his way towards the outside, taken off the puck. Reaching for it is Junker. Will help his team get a line change, move backwards for a second. Ciarino with a nice move, a toe drag. Released at the end, but fanned on the shot. Didn't have the muscle he needed. Under 60 to play in the first. How about that from Dawson Ciarino? Off balance, takes a shove, stayed on his feet, and pulled off the toe drag. Didn't get the release, though. Anderson moving in with a move of his own. Tried to fire a shot blocked by a stick. Dangerous chance in the slot. A rebound through the legs. What skill off of that? That was what? behind the yeah. back. I can't even believe that was even attempted. And it was pulled off too, it almost went in. A behind the back, on the backhand. It was Andrew Pulius again, has the only goal for the pointer so far, nearly found another in spectacular fashion. 
That was a nice feed on the setup, too, from the point. A little bit of a spinorama pass down low. This is played up high into the protective netting as we get a whistle with 14.5 left to go. We'll see if we can see it on the replay here. I got to get another look at this. Look at this feed. Uh, that was a nice saucer, spun it around, oh and then my behind God. the back. Wow. Oh, that was nifty. Could you imagine if that had went in? What a goal that would have been. In the playoffs, too? That's just, wow. You can't see it, but Alex up here is a little upset because he wanted his voice on SportsCenter tomorrow yeah. morning. He wanted his goal call on, on the SportsCenter top 10. Very nearly, very close. 10 seconds to go. Falls. Moves it back down low. Spencer pushed back up top. In the slot, one second to go. Tie ends will touch up. And gives an extra whack there. The last second of Brett Humberstone. And that's going to do it for the end of the first period. The score sitting at an even one to one. Alex Herman and Calvin Keyes here on ACTV. That was quite the spirited first frame. 16 shots on goal to six in favor of the visiting Stevens Point. What did you see after 20, Calvin? Honestly, I think Stevens Point was the better team in that first period. I think they had more ozone possession. I think the a little bit of poor discipline from Adrian. I, I think they took three penalties in that first period. That allowed Stevens Point to really find their offensive groove. Eventually it paid off. They were able to tie the game. For the Bulldogs, I think they're happy to sit back and defend and then look to push up the ice and transition because that's how they were able to get on the board to start the game. Well, the Bulldogs have to be a little bit more careful with the penalties that they're taking. The third they did this period wound up in a power play goal against them for the Stevens point pointers. And with that, one-to-one -one score after 20 minutes of play, Alex Herman and Calvin Keyes here on ACTV will return with the second period of playoff hockey after the break. We continue to take pride and learn from Asa Mahan's leadership today. And the slam! 161 years of commitment to harnessing the power of creativity, ingenuity, community, and academic excellence. I believe that if you get your degree here, the world is going to feel like it's shrinking.
as you anxiously await all of the amazing experiences that will define your college years. You stand today, students, on the threshold of one of the most magical times in your life. Welcome to Adrian, Michigan. We're located in a proud college town. Adrian College is situated just 45 minutes from Ann Arbor, Detroit, and Toledo. We're very excited to show you just a little bit of what AC has to offer. This is the gateway to our campus. Welcome to the place that we believe will change the rest of your life. AC features one of the most well-rounded educational experiences in the country. We offer over 60 different academic majors and 10 academic institutes, as well as dozens of student organizations. Year after year, we've been ranked as one of the nation's best colleges, including being one of the most innovative institutions in the U.S. for our medical programs. Our campus is simply beautiful. Our student to faculty ratio is an incredible 13 to 1. That means more attention for you and a much better overall learning environment. We know how to put together an education that is life changing. And these are just some of the highlights. From our communication arts program, to our many performing arts, to the home of business on campus, to our sciences and medical studies, we have the spaces where you can grow into the professional that you want to become. Our first year student experience is award winning. You'll make lifelong friends here, meet mentors, and maybe even meet that special someone. The Kane Student Center is open 24 hours a day, and there's a lot going on here. The Bulldog Beanery has all of your hot drinks. Pause and Go is our on-campus convenience store the bookstore is where you'll get all of your Bulldog gear, and you can just hang out and study in the sky boxes. Not far away is the Shipman Library. The Shipman has quiet, relaxing spaces for you to study in. You can check out books from thousands of libraries around the country, and the Shipman is open 24 hours as well for your convenience. There are hundreds of learning opportunities on campus. In addition to the arts and beautiful facilities, Adrian College is known for its athletic programs. There is nothing like a Saturday game day here in Adrian. The Bulldog football team are 11-time MIAA champions. At Docking Stadium, fans watch soccer, lacrosse, football, and more. Just a few hundred yards away, Adrian College's basketball teams compete. In addition to basketball, fans can enjoy wrestling, acro and tumbling, and volleyball here. We also have a state-of-the-art weight room available to all of our students. When things heat up too much on campus, you can cool off with our ice sports. Our NCAA ice hockey teams are constantly battling in the national playoffs. Just a quick walk down the service drive, we feature one of the best baseball and softball programs in the nation at our level. Soon you'll be able to cross the street and watch men's and women's rugby take to the pitch as well. 
Our rowing, crew, and top-ranked bass fishing programs compete out of the Adrian College Boathouse, a gorgeous facility, just a 15-minute drive north on Devil's Lake. Our students know how to relax in their downtime. When they're not out and about, we have dozens of housing options on campus. With apartments right in the mix of things, you can pick what works best for you. We've also recently renovated a few of our housing options. Adrian College is a Methodist-affiliated institution that has been changing lives since 1859. The modern liberal arts education offered by our faculty is unrivaled. We can't wait to have you on campus and show you around. Visit adrian.edu to schedule a full campus visit today. We'll see you soon. Dear College Sports. Dear College Sports. Dear College Sports. There's light at the end of the tunnel. We can see it. A return to normal in all the things we love about sports. We're filled with hope just thinking about it. Fans in stadiums and arenas, the hugs, high fives, and dog piles, the championship moments, even the heartbreaking losses, they're coming. While this pandemic is not over, it continues to impact our lives. You've taught us to be resilient even in the face of adversity. To control what we can control and put the greater good before ourselves, we've put those lessons to work. We've found strength in each other, even when we were kept apart. we found unity across campuses, conferences, and divisions. we found out our voices carry weight. Weight will continue to use for positive change. If 2020 taught us anything, it's that nothing's guaranteed. We lost experiences and opportunities we may have taken for granted. The bonding time with our second families, the taste of a hard-earned victory, the comeback stories. Now, we're ready for the greatest comeback you've ever seen. To campuses, classrooms, and competition. The moments together, face to face, hand in hand, arm in arm. More celebrations in uniform and graduations in cap and gown. You take us to places we never imagined. You hold us to a higher standard. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a future full of promise. We see a better world for you, for all of us, for college sports. Adrian College is a pinpoint like no other. With our 77 undergraduate degrees, 47 majors, and 21 broad fields of study, Adrian has a one-of-a-kind, hands-on learning experience for everyone. Do you want to visit the campus of Adrian College in person? Visit adrian.edu forward slash campus hyphen visit. Again, that's adrian.edu forward slash campus hyphen visit. Come take in the beautiful facilities at Adrian College for yourself. A scramble in front and spike the act makes it home! Goes it to the scores! A back hitter moving over Murphy! For the Spencer, comes to watch the Spencer scores! In the slot! What a goal! Looking towards the game, he scores! What a shot! Carter May lights the lamp! It's three to nothing, ball ball! As wide, fire! Rips and repeats, I end! The second straight year! The Bulldogs capture!
continue to take pride and learn from Asa Mahan's leadership today. Welcome back inside Arrington Ice Arena. It's period number two of the quarterfinal NCAA Men's Division III matchup between the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point and your Adrian College Bulldogs. Alex Herman and Calvin Keyes, so happy to have you all rejoin us here for another frame of good playoff hockey. Yeah, we saw two goals in that first period, one from each team. At the 448 mark of the first period, it was Alessio Luciani getting on the board, assisted by Jaden Shields. And then much later in the period, with four minutes to go, Andrew Pulius was assisted by Dawson, Sharino, and Mick Hannigan. And we're all square, Alex. Yeah, 16 to 6 are the shots in favor of the pointers at the moment. So you really feel like they've dominated the offensive zone for the moment. I wouldn't say they've dominated, but they certainly put the pressure on in that first period. So I think Adrian, they're going to need to come out and have a strong start to the second. Even though it's a tie game, I think uh, they're a little bit behind the eight ball with the way Stevens Point kind of asserted their dominance over them in that first period. So we'll get 20 minutes back up on the score clock. Center ice face off, five on five play. And we are underway once again at the AIA. Second period of NCAA Division Three playoff quarterfinal hockey here in Adrian, Michigan. This squeaks over the blue line as Spencer will start things off in neutral. It was soccer kicked in and then picked up on the near side. Spencer will chop one down low. Here's a tipped play in between the slots. Swade skated in with some speed, looking to pick up loose change. And a misplay there from Heinz, looking to hit Spencer on the drop pass. As Wagner went out to stop that pass, and it hopped over his stick. Huge hit there in the corner, tie ends. Laid some contact down. Back down low. Here's Heinz. A stretch pass. Luciani put it wide. That was a quick chance that almost resulted in a goal a minute in for Alessio Luciani. Scored the first in the first period. And a scary turnover. Arm up is on the play. And it's going to go against the pointers. It's a hooking call. I didn't get a good look at it. I'd love to look at the replay for that one. It's going to be against Fletcher Anderson, the sophomore forward from Thunder Bay, Ontario. And it looked like he may have got the stick in on Terry Ryder there as he was trying to skate it out from behind his own net. So the first chance on the power play for the Bulldogs here in tonight's contest. We saw three power plays in the third period alone for Stevens Point. And on the third try for them, they were able to find the back of the net, resulting in the score at the moment at one to one. And immediately off the faceoff, this is lifted out of the zone, coming off the stick of Harrison Stewart. Tallarico plays it off the forehand. Klein, behind the cage, will make his approach. This is slid for Wendt. Mistakenly played back. Heinz will need to go backwards to get to this puck. Got to say, I love these Stevens Point jerseys. Giving me 1970s LA Kings vibes. Beautiful color palette with the purple and gold. Love to see it. They are definitely some of the better jerseys we've seen here. And a broken stick for Potosha as he went to make his pass. Broke right on top of the shaft there. So need to get some new lumber. At least he's able to get the pass off. That could have been a lot worse as the last guy back, having your stick on explode on you like that. And a frustrated misplay there by Heinz. Tried to connect with Klein, but a too far out of his reach as a minute ticks off of the power play. Long pass. Luciani, 2 on 0. Oh, moving in. Scores! He does it again! Lucky Luciani is on the board for the second time tonight! My goodness, Alex. They love that stretch play to Alessio Luciani. Let him drift behind your defense at your own peril. He's just hanging out back there, waiting for a feed. Stevens point is changing. Luciani's in, opened up the wickets of the goaltender and then slipped it right through the five hole to make it 2-1 Bulldogs. That was a thing of beauty for Alessio Luciani. 
the captain, senior forward from Toronto, Ontario, leading the way for the Bulldogs here in the contest. It's 17-41. Left to go here in the second period. That's his second goal of the game, but I want to say that's the third or fourth time he's been in behind one-on-one -on -one with the goaltender. So if you're the Stevens Point defense, make sure you watch out for number 16. He's very quick and shifty as well. A sneaky player certainly has some wheels when he decides to turn them on. And we definitely saw it on display there. So Adrian's captain, Alessio Luciani, able to beat Stephen Point's captain, Ryan Wagner, to make it a 2-1 hockey game. In transition, here's a try for Stevens Point. This is pushed through the slot. Bounced around for a moment, put through the legs. Chiarino looking for an opportunity of his own. Some luches from the crowd as he gets his applause for his second goal of the evening. A long drive. That one sailed wide. Luciani still with a long shift, looking to play this up. It's moved forward, but found its way to the stick of eye. Luciani for Spodniak. Put this on. Wagner didn't see it through a series of bodies. And a two-on-two -two chance for the pointers. Falls, works his way through. It's stripped by Calgin and flexed up and kept in over the blue. Looked like it was gonna cross over. And an odd break. Calgin all alone, but didn't have the speed to get down for the breakaway. So he waited for reinforcements. And looking to set up shop there with the Bulldogs. Once again, a misplay on the pass. You've seen quite a lot of those here in the second period, not finding tape to tape as frequently as they're used to. May puts a shot on, but it's tipped wide. Down low, Humberstone. Has it taken away by May. Player all alone in front. Patosha put it into the chest of Wagner. And what a stop on the doorstep. That's where positioning is key for Ryan Wagner. He slid across well, tracked Patosha, to, able to get in the way. Another great A chance. Just a bit of a sloppy turnover there and good vision from Connor May to find his teammate on the back door. Even better save by Ryan Wagner, able to get over. And as a larger netminder, not a lot of space for Patosha to shoot at when Wagner's in his proper position. Offensive zone draw for Adrian College. One back, but then taken away. I think that's almost been the story of this game, Alex, as the puck goes up out of play. Stevens point with a greater volume of offensive opportunities, but because of a few sloppy breakdowns like we saw there, it provides some really premium grade-A chances for Adrian. And luckily for them, Ryan Wagner's able to bail him out a couple times. Otherwise, there could be a wider margin in this game already. Now, Ryan Wagner skating into the game. 15 games started, 20 wins, 5 losses, Four ties for a 9-3-1 save percentage and a 1-6-4 GAA. So extremely impressive stats for the pointers netminder here tonight. Good hustle by Murphy to negate the icing. Yeah, those are great stats, Alex. Here's a turnover chance. Racing up. A shot that was put too high over the glass. Fader tried it. Murphy to the outside now in the slot. Looked like it was going to be Hunter Went to pull up for the one-timer. But it was interfered with as a tipped shot. Tallarico doesn't know where it is, but just barely holding on. I think that was really with the right elbow there. Yeah, that was an interesting one for sure. You could see the concern. He kind of spun around there. It was just like sitting on the side of his leg as he was down in the butterfly. There you also see the Wow Cafe and Eatery, one of the premier destinations to watch Adrian College Hockey, a really intimate atmosphere sitting on top of the benches there on both sides. Get a lot closer to the ice surface, hear more of the sounds that typically get muffled through the glass in the stands when you're sitting elsewhere in Arrington. Yeah, and for uh, away coaches coming to this barn, the fans are in a prime position to <laughs> have some words with the opposing coaching staff, so it creates a hostile environment as a visitor to this barn. Heinz trying to fight for it. Lost it in the battle. A quick up for Hill. It skipped over his stick as he was streaking. 
And this it's one in. bounces in. Isn't it was on it? the line, they but waved it's it. waved it off. The light went on at first, but the officials signaled no goal. The pointer started to celebrate. They believe this puck is wow. in. Wow. They're going to review this. And I think this one's going to go to the goal judge. They're going to ask the goal judge what he saw. To me, it looked like it may have gotten in behind Tallarico, and it obviously the first attempt, Hill wasn't quite able to reach. It went off of Adrian Defenseman. You can see on your screen the tiny black dot. Can we play that replay again, please? I'd love to look at that again. The only time where we can see the puck is right after it looked like it went behind Tallarico. Maybe if we could pause it right in a second here, you can see it right there. It's That's right on the, on the goal, goal line. line. Yep. It's right on the goal line. Just barely. Thanks to our great director, Kyle Plesha, doing a bang-up job tonight. Appreciate the second look at that one. So but the, they're talking to the goal judge, yeah, the man are. who was in the booth right behind the net to see what his vantage point was because he put the goal light on, as you said, Alex. We can see it on the goal line in a second, but when it initially deflected, we really have no way of telling where that puck is. And I don't know if the ruling is if the goal judge puts the light on before the head official does, if it counts as a goal or not, but it's certainly going to be reviewed here. I'm it's, curious if yep. this puck bounced behind Tallarico and then squirted back out. That yeah. very well could have gone. Look at that. Was that behind the goal line? That's that's an impossible angle to that see from so up here. Close. Man, oh, man. Controversy wow. here at Arrington Ice Arena with 14-17 wow. left to go in the second. This is a big call, too, because, <laughs> yeah, this has been a tight checking game, so we may not have many more goals after this. This is going to have a big effect on the outcome of this game. It's tough at the NCAA D3 level, obviously. They're not able to look at that same video replay angle that we are, so you're purely going off what the goal judge says. Let's see if we'll get the call. I'm very interested to see what the ultimate decision for this is. I think if you're the referee on the ice and you waved it off and you didn't have anything conclusive, I want to say that you're not going to be able to call this a good goal. And it's Tyler Kruger on the bench who will talk to the official. And see what the call is. We'll see what's going to happen. We see it again here. Ooh. It's waved off. It's not going to count in unbelievable fashion. The Bulldogs are going to hang on to their 2-1 to one lead here with 14-17 left to go in the second period. It was reviewed, discussed, and then denied. Yeah, well, we went to that replay. The referee went right in front of the scorer's booth and gave the clear washout signal. No goal. It's 2-1 still in favor of Adrian. Step-up hit there made by oh. Ryder. My goodness, that was dangerous. Ryder... Delivered a huge hit to Chiarino, and then as Chiarino was trying to go up, Ryder tripped off of me, and then Chiarino caught a skate to the face. So I hope he's okay. Luckily, he's wearing a cage. Otherwise, that could have been bad. A lot going on here. Humberstone crosses over, puts one off the high glass. Behind the net where we saw it just moments ago. Pointers scored. Had their goal waved off for those of you just tuning in now to ACTV. Here's another chance, shoulder to side by Tallarico as he keeps that one out. Down low under the red, a wraparound chance. It scrambles it's and they score! Quickly, they had their first one waved off. They try again on the goal line and getting credit for this one, it's going to be Dawson Chiarino. Yeah, great stick to itiveness. Sustained ozone time for the pointers. It's sent net front. Chiarino diving down to the ice, able to smack it in. We're all square at two. You had a feeling that something like that was going to happen. Stevens Point unhappy with their second original goal waved off, and they'll jump on the board officially for the second time tonight. The pointers would not be denied. Out shooting Adrian 19 to 8. This was quickly moved up and tipped on net. As holding on to it with the paw is Ryan Wagner. That was a huge goal. I'm always, I was so impressed by the effort from Chiarino there. The puck just sitting there. I think he took a bit of a bump, was going down, still just able to get the blade of his stick on it and put it in. Right into the corner too, great placement with the shot. Back the other way. With speed, it's Connor Witherspoon. 
on the left side, looking towards the front. And that one just narrowly scaled high over the crossbar as Tallarico bobbled up his shot. It went in, but it's waved off as the whistle was blown. The puck went into the goal right after the whistle went, I think, Alex. And tough to tell because from our angle, we couldn't see where the puck was on the far post, but it looked like Tallarico had it covered and the pointers were banging away at it. I Goodness. Think, yeah, I think definitively this one definitely will not count. The, the whistle definitely was blown, but Tallarico certainly had some trouble holding on to his rebound. Yeah, when the whistle blows, that's not something you can review or overturn or have a discussion about. When the whistle blows, the play is dead. Whether it was a mistake or not remains to be seen, but one thing that's for certain, this Stevens Point team is rolling right now. They're firing on all cylinders offensively. This is a situation that's very unfamiliar for the Bulldogs at this point in their season. They're being outshot. They're also tied in a regulation situation here in the playoffs. They're normally used to leading a lot of their games by large goal margins. And they're being very well matched by the visiting Wisconsin Stevens Point pointers. That's playoff hockey for you. If you want to have success, you got to play through some of this adversity. Being outplayed a little bit, can you find a way? As for the pointers, just keep your foot on the gas pedal. That puck went up into the netting and out of play. 12-17 left in the second period. Chiarino getting his eighth goal of the season moments ago to improve to 20 points in 25 games on the year. Pulius, Chiarino, Anderson, those are, those are the leading scorers for this pointer team, and they've shown up in this one so far. They've performed really well to this point in the contest. There's a loose puck all alone on the doorstep. It pops up and then is played down by tie ends. Had it poked away from him. Spencer will get a saucer. I don't think I've seen that in a hockey game before. Finstrom with a little bit of a header there as the puck went off the dome. Spencer down low to ends. Put it just barely wide. Swade. This long shot traveled from way downtown, put into the chest. And some pushing and shoving on top of the blue paint. Both teams exchanging some pleasantries. Yeah, they weren't really happy about tie ends. Parked himself right in front of Ryan Wagner after the whistle. Nor should they be an ends still tangled up with a pointer player. I can't see who ends is jawing with. Looked like he was saying some more words. It, it might have been Wagner who was guarded behind his goalie net there. It was Quinton Hill who was in front of the net who he was, or no, that's... Um, that's Brett Humberstone, who tie ends was tangled up with in front of the net. Cooler heads prevail. Shocked we don't see a penalty coming out of that. This is moved from up top. Press the other way, Luciani. Missed pass for Shields. Tallarico. With a nice play, is taken down. No call on that. I think it was incidental contact as Spodniak will drop to Spencer. Here's a shot moving over. And now towards the left corner. Continuing on, Luciani to Spodniak, got caught in the body. And a big hit, Chiarino lays out Calgian on his own blue. That's a bit of a tabletop there. He kind of ducked low to almost flip Calgian, put him a little bit off balance. This is sailed high over the crease. And played as May will pick up Calgin with the dump in. Stomped underneath the red with 10-14 left to go in the second period. Game tied 2-2. Two two. This travels the length. Adinier with plenty of time and space 
will send a long pass up for Potosha. Fader connects there with Rue. Now back the other way, it's a Dinier. Murphy checked off the puck for a moment and a long pass for Spagnolo. Walks it in, the shot was blocked. Stewart stepped in the way there to stop that chance from happening. Shields will have to skate back quickly and get this to Ryder. It's fed for Murphy, now to Summers. Tried to get a pass off for Went, but he couldn't. This one traveling all the way down. And it's gonna be called down for an icing. Finally, we get a stoppage after that was some exciting back and forth action. 9.09 left to go in the second period here on ACTV. Alex Herman and Calvin Keyes live from Arrington Ice Arena. Quarterfinals of the men's NCAA playoffs. Winner advances to the Frozen Four, which still at this point has been undecided on venue. Wouldn't mind going back to uh, Lake Placid. That was a great host for it last year. This is tied up in the right corner. Played in between the hashes. Quickly moved for May. Spencer to Murphy. Up top, Summers. DDD pass taken down with Spencer. Don't know if that contact was incidental or not. As Shearino will pick up a slap shot and an easy glove save for Tallarico. Jaden Shields just got tripped up after the whistle by Dawson Shearino, and he's going to get called for that too, I think. Wow, that's not a penalty you like to see. It's a little bit of poor discipline from Chiarino there, just sticking out his stick after the whistle to trip up the Bulldog player. I did not see much there. I'm kind of shocked that the referees decided to take him to the box. Usually that's one that you let slide, but laying down the hammer and giving the Bulldogs another power play in an interesting turn of events here. This is one back off the draw, but is played over the blue. <laughs> Left side now in the slot, ends to Spodniak, fired, it was blocked. Spodniak didn't know where the puck went, he was looking for it as it glided outside of the blue line. Ends over for Spodniak. Moved around rink wide. Ends looking to hold on to it. It's picked up by Shields. Now down low, looking for a chance. Luciani was bidding for the hat trick, but he was stopped. Shields back the other way. Line change, four new units out for the pointers. As this is over for Luciani, a backhand pass for Redding. Couldn't get it in time to get the shot off. Credit Jake Tice with the back check to knock it away. Finstrom all alone and it's shoulder to side and into the glass by Tallarico. Moved back down low, Finstrom all alone, uncontested. I'm still thinking about that back check from Jake Tice. May have just saved a goal by breaking up the cross crease pass by Alessio Luciani. The net was open if Tice didn't get there. Redding. Moves near towards the net front. Couldn't get the space in time. 30 seconds left to go on the five on four. Tallarico on his forehand. Spins off, loses control of it. Luckily, it was Heinz who was there in time. Witherspoon making a smart choice to skate this back. I was going to say the same thing, just trying to kill time as you have possession. Move it backwards, don't need to be forced to go forwards. And they killed about 10 seconds off the clock, did Witherspoon by just moving it to his defenseman. This puck was sent the full length of the ice, though. Look at this pass coming over. Could you imagine if 
Redding was able to get a handle on that one. And like I said, you see the hustle from Tice. He's getting back and he knocked it away. Redding was gonna have a wide open look on goal there. Great look at the helmet from Tallarico. Love the paint job, the Bulldog bursting through the brick wall. Love to get a shot of the mask of Ryan Wagner. He's got a pretty cool paint job on his as well. Connor May circles the outside, puts a shot in front, and the penalty expiring. Chiarino out of the box, now to even strength. A shot from downtown, loose in front! It's kept out! What a save by Wagner! Great stop by number 30 on Dante Spagnolo. There's Spagnolo once again. Plays it over. Babyak gets forced out of the way and a long pass looking there. Almost tipped the right way for Spagnolo, who is streaking alone. Chiarino picks up and chips off the glass. I think that went off the partition of the penalty box door. A bit of an odd bounce there. Yeah. 5.35 left to go, second period. A two-on-one chance. Here are the pointers, played into the slot, and it was too far behind Moline. And that puck pounced up into the netting. I don't know if the officials saw it or not. Might yeah. not have actually caught it, but looked like it from here. Moberg had to saucer the pass to get it over the stick of the defenseman, and it went over his teammate's stick. Swade was looking towards the front. Puck taken away from him quickly by Sam Eide. Moberg on top of the blue. Moline contested with ends as a hard hit there sent on to Terry Ryder. Swade to Adinier, lost it in his feet. Finstrom trying to play it himself, puts this on, save Tallarico. The rebound kicks out. And a pile in front. And we'll get the whistle with 4.43 left to go in the second period. Yeah, Ryder got pushed over by Tice from behind right on top of Tallarico. That couldn't have felt good. Another look at the chance here is walking in with the opportunity, sending one on net was Finstrom, and then just a pile up in front of the goal ensuing. And Ryder, that's what Terry Ryder is talking to the official about right now. He got a cross check right in the back, which is something he got called for earlier in the game and sent him dangerously on top of his own netminder. I will say though, Stevens Point head coach Tyler Kruger has to be really pleased with the way his team's played. Out shooting Adrian 26 to 11, and the second period's not even over. Their offense has really been ticking in this game. They've had a strong effort. They beat Augsburg two to one. That took multiple overtime periods to advance them to this point in the NCAA playoffs. Now on the other side, the week of rest Sort of looking like it's catching up to the Bulldogs, taking them out of their rhythm a little bit. Luciani puts a shot on wide to the blocker side. Spodniak with a chance of his own. That one denied. It's kind of a shame that Stevens Point and Augsburg had to meet in the first round of the tournament because those are two really quality teams. Augsburg is a team that beat Adrian in a shootout earlier on this season. So we knew this was going to be a good one when Stevens Point was able to take them down. Shields with a chance. Squeaked through the feet of Spodniak. Almost caromed in the right spot. Thies put it off the outside. Wonder if this puck's getting a little warm. It's really bouncing all over the place right now. Calton. It's like a hot potato at the moment. He takes a drive over the glove side. Streaking to the left is Fader. It's on sides as Spencer will stop it underneath the red. Here's a shot played into the chest. Tallarico dives out. And he swallows up the rebound. We talk about it a lot. Tallarico, not the biggest net miner, but he's very, very athletic. So that's how he makes up for it with a lot of the, a lot of the saves that he is able to make. Is here's another look at the chance for Spagnolo in front and Ryan Wagner. That was a little while ago, but Wagner again, just a really nice stop, getting the glove hand up to get a piece of the shot from Spagnolo. is moved back. A shot coming off of the point. It was Aramatario who tried to get a bid. 
Fumbled over for Babiak as he tried a chance. And it was put into the feet of Calgin. Fader, the captain, will skate the left wing. Plays it down low for Northey in the slot. No chance there. As this caromed over the stick of Connor May. Icing, surprisingly, though, waved off. I was surprised by that, too. May did not get any piece of that puck, but still they waved it off. But This icing, too, also is waved off, so potentially a matching call. Nice move, the shake and bake from Babyak. As long as you call the icing consistently, I don't think anyone's going to have a problem with it. Murphy plays it loose. It's over the blue with Denier. We'll go D to D with his partner and Terry Ryder. Summers shook around a hit, avoiding the body contact. And this puck played into the bench of the Wisconsin Stevens Point. Right in front of backup netminder for tonight, Alex Proctor. An interesting story for Proctor too. Basically split the season in games with his goaltending partner, Ryan Wagner. 11 games started, six wins, two losses, and two ties for a 917 save percentage and a 206 GAA. So an impressive way to start your collegiate career as a freshman. Yeah, it's similar to Dershawn Stewart and Nick Tallarico for Adrian, where you have two competent goaltenders carrying the load for most of the season, but then come the playoffs, you got to pick a guy and ride with him. Well, there's an arm up, and I think this is going to go against Wisconsin. Hook is the call. I don't know who it's against as far as player, but it looks like it's going to be Cody Moline. And the Bulldogs will head back to the power play with 2.09 left to go in the second period. Yeah, I think referee was picking up on all the small things on that play. Just It wasn't a huge hook, but it made an impact on the play, so that's why it was called against Moline. Very strong words there, Calvin. Wisconsin band in the corner playing all the small things by famous band Blink-182. Song really brought into the hockey community last season by the Colorado Avalanche during their playoff push. Yeah, they really gave it to my Red Wings today, too. I was <laughs> having a tough time watching that earlier this afternoon. With speed shorthanded is Finstrom. He's shoved off the puck by Shields. Trust the Azer plan. Luciani. Walking it down, slowing things up a bit as Shields will get it at the blue. Here's a one-timer from Enns. Laid the hammer down, but Ooh. couldn't get the accuracy he needed. Odd bounce off the skate of the official, gave the puck right to Stevens Point there too. Nothing he can do, he's part of the plane surface. Way out of his crease is Wagner, who covered up a bouncing puck that avoided a stick. And a smart touch up there from the Wisconsin Stevens Point net miner. What's funny is we've been noticing how often Luciani's been able to get in behind the Stevens Point defense. That time as he was cherry picking across the blue line, Mick Hannigan just knocked his stick right out of his hand. So that's one way to deal with the issue. The pointers. Timeout called here by Adam Krug, I believe. It's interesting to me, 1.11 left to go in the second period. The pointers limiting the Bulldogs to only 12 shots through basically two periods of play. And six shots in the first period and another six here. Kind of strange at this moment for the Bulldogs. Not something you see very often from them. Yeah, the way I see it is you've got about a minute left in the period and about a minute left on the power play. So I think... He wants to, Coach Krug wants to give his top guys a little bit of a rest so he can send his top unit back out there for the rest of this period and just kind of throw the kitchen sink at the pointers to close this one out. And we'll take a quick break here on ACTV. We'll return after the short timeout. Don't go anywhere. NCAA Hockey in Adrian.
Got it. There we go. We are back here on ACTV. Puck is dropped with a minute 08 left to go in the second period. Bulldogs, 60 seconds left just about, and time ticking down in their power play. Tallarico trying to fake the pass there. We'll push this up top. Shields is held up for a moment. We'll get this to Luciani. It's swiped away from him. Keenigan. Along the right wing. Tied up in the corner. Pushed back up top. Spodniak. Shields. 34 left to go. Has Spodniak on the outside. A drive. And a save by Wagner. Yeah, I think Ryan Wagner's a really good athlete, but a lot of times he's not. He's, he has pretty calm feet. He's just in the right place at the right time. He's tracking where the puck is going, and you see there, just very square to the puck and, and really good position to make the stop. Doesn't have to dive all over the place because he's already where he needs to be. Good qualities from a goaltender when you can slow the game down for yourself, look through the lanes and get eyes on the puck. Little time left in the second frame. Shields to ends. Walk down for a moment, back up top for Shields. Here's a shot, and a swiping glove save made by Wagner. That's a tough save to make too with Luciani all up in his grill too. He was right by the blue paint, not giving Wagner a lot of room to work, making life difficult. And luckily for Wagner, he was able to beat the stick of Luciani because what we've seen all season, Alessio Luciani's really good at redirecting pucks right in front of the net. Love the look from ends, but yeah, Wagner just really alert, tracking the puck super well, seeing it really well so far tonight. 10 seconds left in the period, back to even strength. Can the Bulldogs get a last second try off? Luciani pushed into the corner, a backhander lifted out of the zone, and that's gonna do it for the end of the second period. And after 40 minutes played here at Arrington Ice Arena, score sitting at an even two to two hockey game. Lots of good skill from both sides. Saw a little bit of chaos here in the second period. Had a goal count, and then it was waved off after further review. And that's where we sit at the deadlock at the moment. Yeah, I think it's anyone's game. Obviously, Stevens points had more of the chances like we've been talking about, but Adrian's kind of shown throughout this game. They're happy to you know, have a quick strike against the run of play. So I think we're in for an entertaining final 20 minutes, Alex. So the third period, up and coming after the break, Alex Herman and Calvin Keyes here on ACTV will return with the final regulation period in this NCAA Divisions Three men's hockey matchup. Wisconsin Stephen Point and Adrian College coming to you next. Continue to take pride and learn from Asim Han's leadership today. And the slam! 161 years of commitment to harnessing the power of creativity, ingenuity, community, and academic excellence. I believe that if you get your degree here, the world is going to feel like it's shrinking.
As you anxiously await all of the amazing experiences that will define your college years, you stand today, students, on the threshold of one of the most magical times in your life. Welcome to Adrian, Michigan. We're located in a proud college town. Adrian College is situated just 45 minutes from Ann Arbor, Detroit, and Toledo. We're very excited to show you just a little bit of what AC has to offer. This is the gateway to our campus. Welcome to the place that we believe will change the rest of your life. AC features one of the most well-rounded educational experiences in the country. We offer over 60 different academic majors and 10 academic institutes, as well as dozens of student organizations. Year after year, we've been ranked as one of the nation's best colleges, including being one of the most innovative institutions in the U.S. for our medical programs. Our campus is simply beautiful. Our student to faculty ratio is an incredible 13 to one. That means more attention for you and a much better overall learning environment. We know how to put together an education that is life changing. And these are just some of the highlights. From our communication arts program, to our many performing arts, to the home of business on campus, to our sciences and medical studies, we have the spaces where you can grow into the professional that you want to become. Our first year student experience is award winning. You'll make lifelong friends here, meet mentors, and maybe even meet that special someone. The Kane Student Center is open 24 hours a day, and there's a lot going on here. The Bulldog Beanery has all of your hot drinks. Pause and Go is our on-campus convenience store the bookstore is where you'll get all of your bulldog gear, and you can just hang out and study in the sky boxes. Not far away is the Shipman Library. The Shipman has quiet, relaxing spaces for you to study in. You can check out books from thousands of libraries around the country, and the Shipman is open 24 hours as well for your convenience. There are hundreds of learning opportunities on campus. In addition to the arts and beautiful facilities, Adrian College is known for its athletic programs. There is nothing like a Saturday game day here in Adrian. The Bulldog football team are 11 time MIAA champions. At Docking Stadium, fans watch soccer, lacrosse, football, and more. Just a few hundred yards away, Adrian College's basketball teams compete. In addition to basketball, fans can enjoy wrestling, acro and tumbling, and volleyball here. We also have a state-of-the-art weight room available to all of our students. When things heat up too much on campus, you can cool off with our ice sports. 
our NCAA ice hockey teams are constantly battling in the national playoffs. Just a quick walk down the service drive, we feature one of the best baseball and softball programs in the nation at our level. Soon you'll be able to cross the street and watch men's and women's rugby take to the pitch as well. Our rowing, crew, and top-ranked bass fishing programs compete out of the Adrian College Boathouse, a gorgeous facility, just a 15-minute drive north on Devil's Lake. Our students know how to relax in their downtime. When they're not out and about, we have dozens of housing options on campus. With apartments right in the mix of things, you can pick what works best for you. We've also recently renovated a few of our housing options. Adrian College is a Methodist-affiliated institution that has been changing lives since 1859. The modern liberal arts education offered by our faculty is unrivaled. We can't wait to have you on campus and show you around. Visit adrian.edu to schedule a full campus visit today. We'll see you soon. Dear College Sports. Dear College Sports. Dear College Sports. There's light at the end of the tunnel. We can see it. A return to normal and all the things we love about sports. We're filled with hope just thinking about it. Fans in stadiums and arenas, the hugs, high fives, and dog piles, the championship moments, even the heartbreaking losses, they're coming. While this pandemic is not over, it continues to impact our lives. You've taught us to be resilient even in the face of adversity. To control what we can control and put the greater good before ourselves, we've put those lessons to work. We've found strength in each other, even when we were kept apart. We've found unity across campuses, conferences, and divisions. we found out our voices carry weight. Weight will continue to use for positive change. If 2020 taught us anything, it's that nothing's guaranteed. We lost experiences and opportunities we may have taken for granted. The bonding time with our second families, the taste of a hard earned victory, the comeback stories. Now we're ready for the greatest comeback you've ever seen. To campuses, classrooms, and competition. The moments together, face to face, hand in hand, arm in arm. The more celebrations in uniform and graduations in cap and gown. You take us to places we never imagined. You hold us to a higher standard. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a future full of promise. We see a better world for you, for all of us, for college sports. Adrian College is a pinpoint like no other. With our 77 undergraduate degrees, 47 majors, and 21 broad fields of study, Adrian has a one-of-a-kind, hands-on learning experience for everyone. Do you want to visit the campus of Adrian College in person? Visit adrian.edu forward slash campus hyphen visit. Again, that's adrian.edu forward slash campus hyphen visit. Come take in the beautiful facilities at Adrian College for yourself. A scramble in front and slide the action! Oh! Goes and shoots and scores! A back hitter moving over Murphy! Where's Spencer? Spencer watch the Spencer scores! In the slot!
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, inside Arrington Ice Arena. It's the third and final regulation period of this NCAA Men's Division III playoff quarterfinal matchup between the visiting Wisconsin Stevens Point Pointers and your Adrian College Bulldogs. Hello, everyone. My name is Alex Herman, rejoined, as always, by Calvin Keyes. Score sitting at an even 2-2 two two right now, the same way that we ended off the first period, except it was 1-1, one one, of course. A pair of goals from both sides and some really good hockey after 40 minutes of play. What did you see out there, Calvin? I think a big turning point in that period was that goal getting waved off for Stevens Point. There was an odd deflection in front of the net. Puck was sitting on the goal line. The goal judge turned on the red light. The referee on the ice waved it. And after a discussion and a long stoppage, they decided to keep the goal off the board. So that's the reason it's tied right now. You could argue that maybe the Pointers deserve to have the lead, but Adrian hanging on and um, Pointers actually have not led in this hockey game yet. They've been playing catch up despite outshooting Adrian two to one. Well, it was Alessio Luciani who got the second goal for the Bulldogs and Dawson Chiarino who would get the equalizer once again to leave us at a two to two hockey score. And there you see players retaking to the ice as we'll get set and ready to drop the puck for the third period. Fresh sheet of ice out there. And this one is really shaping up to be quite the spectacle. Tie game going into the third period. The place is rocking. We got the band playing music. And we got all of you, a thousand plus fans watching at home. This is amazing. Thanks for making us a part of your Saturday night. This has been a treat so far. And we always love to shout out our crew here at ACTV putting in all the hard work, all of us being students here at Adrian College, putting yep. in as much work as we possibly can. So huge stick tops out to everybody who's working for us tonight. Yep, Kyle Plesha and Josiah Durrell producing the stream, Dakota Schneider to my left running the top camera, and many more making this broadcast possible. All students at Adrian College stepping up to the plate to deliver you this action. We hope you've enjoyed. And hope you're doing well wherever you're watching. Looks like officials taking just a couple extra seconds to let the ice sit. Water hasn't fully settled down, but now we'll get the go ahead signal. Center ice face off draw. And we are underway once again here at the AIA as this draw is one back cleanly. And the Bulldogs will possess. Shields will slap it in. And <laughs> That puck just got caught and I think a bit of a wet patch. That's not what you like to see at the start of a period. Scary as a defenseman when you catch a wet area like that. Pointers looking to break out. Slowly starting off the third period. This caromed off a of body and traveled over the netting and is out of play with 19.28 left to go in the third period. Right into the healthy scratches, standing next to the Adrian bench. Number one rule of going to a hockey game, keep your head on a swivel. Yes. Be alert at all times. You never know what could be headed your way. Luckily, we got a lot of netting we do. here. I, I, at I think this has to be one of the best protected rinks that I've ever been in because there's a full 360-degree netting going all the way to the top of the ceiling to make sure that everybody stays safe. Play progresses. Down low, pass was misplayed. Now back towards Stewart. And he'll send it up a little bit higher. Looking to glove it down for a moment was Redding, but he couldn't. Tallarico stopping with the paddle. Ryder, a drop pass. Redding will get it to Luciani. Has two goals so far this evening. The captain for the Adrian College Bulldogs. As a turnover, finds its way to the stick of Matt Redding. He'll circle the right, plays it into the slot for Spodnian. He's not in the proper shooting position, so he couldn't get a chance. This is pushed back for Klein. Now for Redding, who goes for a skate. Babiak, Spodniak. Tied up in the right side corner. Finally, it's stripped away. Pointers will look to break out of their own zone, and they do. Spodniak's got to be careful. He wrapped that left arm around the body of the pointer player. That could have very easily been a holding call. He got away with one there. This is played off the boards as Junker was there to interject. As picking up some speed as Patosha put a shot on and Waffle boarded aside. Here's another chance and looking through traffic was Wagner. 
As he'll get the glove on it. Nice stop by Wagner, as you said. Look at the wheels. Patosha bursting away, tried to go across the net to the blocker side of Wagner, and the pointer netminder makes a blocker save and then a glove save, using both hands well. Delay on the face-off draw. We'll get the signal finally. Patosha will win it back. Created that last scoring opportunity we saw moments ago. Trying to kick things free as it's lifted but kept in. Junker moves this one up. Caresses off of a stick that was Finstrom who tried to hold on to it. Katosha puts a shot on, deflected off of a skate, and it bounced high and wide. A little bit of a slower start to this third period. Both teams really not looking to give up much space as Patosha is free for a moment. Didn't have any help as the Bulldogs were caught in a line change. Went to Ryder, now to Adenie. Back up top for Went. This is played through some feet. Summers to Murphy. And a let's go Bulldogs from the crowd. Skating up, Northy has it along the right oh. side and he's cleaned out. Oh boy. And a scary hit there. I hope Northy is okay, oh he's not looking good. Adenier caught him right in the head there. I don't know if it was intentional, but we're gonna step aside as Northy's attended to. Hope he's all right. Oh. Back here at Arrington Ice Arena after that quick injury timeout it was Wilf Wilson Northey who got cleaned out on a big hit in front of his own netminder and is escorted off to the ice for some repairs. Certainly hope that he is okay. It was a huge collision there. Yeah, it really was an odd collision. It looked like Northey kind of initiated the contact trying to skip around to Denier and they just caught like an elbow or a shoulder right to the side. But glad to see he's okay and sending our best wishes out to the senior from North Vancouver, British Columbia. Ends helps turn this over. Puyas in the neutral zone will dump it in. Chiarino battles with Denier as this is up for Ends. Moving farther to the outside. Stick the side off a shot from Enns. Wagner with the stick safe. Loving it down is Klein. Suede dumps in. He'll skate off for a line change. Junker, nice move as he looks towards the front. Fired a shot. Staying in the lane there valiantly was Babiak. No hesitation to block it. Spodniak. Skating up with speed and he's whistled down for the offsides. 15.40 left to go here in the third period at Arrington Ice Arena. You know, Matus Spodniak has had a bit of a quiet evening. You know, for the leading score in the country, we haven't said his name a lot. So you wonder if in these last 15 minutes if we'll see him appear and work some of his magic that we've seen throughout the season. Bulldogs will certainly need him here down the stretch. It's a dangerous line. They've got Alessio Luciani and Matus Spodniak playing together. Arguably, they're two top players. Flexed up top right point. Shot negated before it could reach anywhere close. Redding is tied up. That was Aromateria who stepped in front and a loose puck covered up. And good holding on there, Wagner will once again stop this. 
Oh, look at the chance, look at the strength from Luciani just getting the edge, driving net front, and then good respect there once the puck was covered. He didn't really jab away at it, just let it be. Luciani just, he's a great player, but he's got great sportsmanship as well. Stepping off with a shot, it was Chase Spencer. Jake Tice with another great defensive play, a huge shot block, ate that one. It's played in between the hash marks, picking up his falls. Both teams really doing a great job in the defensive end, not shy of stepping in the lane, trying to make block shots. No fear, and that's the kind of grit that we like to see in playoff hockey. As Patosha will send a pass on, that shot was gloved in and out there by Wagner. And luckily, the rebound was cleared in front of the danger area on top of his crease. Yeah, as you were saying, Alex, this is the time of year where you're going to do whatever you can to help your team win. That's all these guys care about, the team. A backhand chance. Tallarico read Ooh. it all the way. And he'll stop it. Chase Spencer just slashed the stick right out of the hands of Connor Witherspoon as he was driving net front. And you wonder if in this third period if the referees will really tighten the margins of what penalties they're going to call. Don't want it to influence the game for them, but I think Spencer definitely could have been called for a slash there as he prevented Witherspoon from getting a clean shot off. There you see just behind the faceoff draw the Adrian Women's NCAA Division III team showing their support for their classmates. Murphy skates the left, orders his way around using his power as he puts a shot on and it's gloved down once again by Wagner. That was a deceptive release from Riley Murphy, snapped it off quickly but Wagner has been seeing the puck so well throughout this game. Snaps it up again with that quick glove hand. Wagner's been extremely strong here in the contest. 21 shots, 19 saves through two periods of regulation play. 14.05 left to go in the third period. Draw chopped back. Aramata Rio gave it away for Summers, who plays it for Murphy and skates the right. Going down low, a spinning pass blindly taken away by Fletcher Anderson. Here's a shot blocker to side by Tallarico. Murphy skate things up, elects to take the dump in. Summers will chase, but it's Junker who has plenty of speed. Galloping up, swiped by ends, finds its way to the stick of Chiarino. Chiarino still tangled up with Suede behind the play. Eventually they'll separate. Looked like the pointers almost got caught for too many men there. It was definitely a sloppy change. Here's Hill, right side, fires! And that one a little too high. Heenigan, playing this on one hand, leaving it for Ide with some speed. Here's a chance and a nifty stick handle by Moline, but it escaped his grasp. Oh. Right in front of the official, Heinz was tripped up, but no call there. Ends with a reverse hit on Hill. the other way, Moberg. What a move. A nice move as he shook through. Got past Babiak, but it was Shields who came in to support. I think Moberg's an underrated player for these pointers. Only has six points this season, but he's making heady plays out there that go beyond the score sheet. A three on two for the Bulldogs. Here they come. Luciani looking for the glove side. Puts it too far and wide, and another chance. It was Luciani who was streaking in front. Almost got it to go on the redirection. Luciani clearly frustrated. He couldn't quite put that one home. Could see that puck moving in slow motion. Matt Redding carried it into the offensive zone, dropped it off for Luciani. Didn't miss the top corner by much with that chance. 
And then this redirect, ooh, just whistled wide of that left post. And you see Luciani <laughs> head in hands. Got to stay poised. They know they're getting chances. They got to keep shooting. I think Luciani can see visions of the hats cascading down to the ice with that chance. Luciani played it for Redding. It's fought off by Wagner on top of the crease, a pile up and a whistle. Wow. The Luciani, Redding, and Spodniak line is so dangerous. Every time they're out there, something happens. That was sent over the net by Luciani. Redding tried a shot from a hard angle. Wagner is just going to smother it, and then Spodniak disturbing the piece in the blue paint. But props to the pointers for being able to box out there in front of their goaltender. Swade will get this back off of the faceoff. It's played around the dasher as Heinz able to stutter step his way through, trying to create more opportunities for the Bulldogs. Bulldogs have really turned it on here in the third. They've been closing the gap in shots. Only down by eight right now, 29 to 21 in favor of Stevens Point. Heinz will keep things going, loving it down there on the far blue. Will get it right back to him, walks his way through with a 360. Back for Spencer, up top, a shot, stick to side. Wagner pushes it to the outside, shields to Spencer. Here's a tip in front, that one grabbing a piece, sailed high and wide. Heinz is down low, looked for ends, put this one on. Fought off. A wraparound chance if they can hurry. Here's Spencer, put it wide. The Bulldogs starting to hit their stride here in the third period. Some quick shooting from Adrian College. A chip off the boards. The soccer kicked by Spencer. Chiarino drops it back. Now looking towards the front, here's a drive, and it's just barely put wide. How did Pulius miss that one? What an opportunity. Redding to Luciani. He flexes it high, and a shot from just beyond the boards. Spodniak put it on net, wow. and it's swallowed up by Wagner. Look at this. The chance was amazing opportunity for Andrew Pulius here. Watch him on the left side of your screen. It's carried in here by Hennigan. Found Pulius with a nice backhand feed to slip it through traffic and just missed the mark. It was a long shift for D partners, Jaden Shields and Chase Spencer. They were out there for quite some time, so you have to imagine that they were running out of air. And luckily, they were able to stop that chance before they got off for a change. Anderson puts this on, stopped by Tallarico. Hennigan. Wrapping down low as it's Terry Ryder who will pick up the pieces. Started to make his approach, but pulled up. We'll wait for the right opportunity. And now he finds it in Alessio Luciani. Two goals tonight. The only two at that for the Adrian College Bulldogs. Underneath the halfway point in the third period of regulation. NCAA Division III men's playoffs, the quarterfinal round. This is lifted up, clearing the neutral zone. It is no icing, but that wow. time it, it was very delayed. I, I really thought they were going to let it go, but officials thought otherwise. That puck barely trickled over the goal line. I guess Adrian's going to take it, but <laughs> for Stevens' point, <laughs> they're upset. Understandably so. Tyler Kruger wants an explanation. There you see John Calgen. Good season for him. The junior from South Lyon, Michigan, staying in his home state for his collegiate yeah. career. South Lyon's pretty nearby. Fun fact about John Calgen, I didn't know until a few weeks ago. He's actually a vegetarian. His nickname, the guys call him Veggie. <laughs> Eat your greens, kids. Learn from John Calgen. Healthy diet can definitely lead to becoming a college hockey player one day. It's a big part of the lifestyle. It's not just working out, it's what you put into your body too. That it is. Both the players on both rosters, as we know, take such good care of their bodies, having to compete in the NCAA. Go through rigorous training, 
season in and season out to stay in shape, to try and give their team the edge. May will spin off. Able to afford some extra seconds. Junker had a handful of May's jersey there as he was spinning around too. May almost caught a pass at the left faceoff circle. As quickly this is turned over for Finstrom. Played closer and Tallarico got it with the glove but it bounced out. Fees. Lost it but luckily had Ide behind him. Witherspoon controlling. Good to see Wilson Northy back out there. Here's a shot that just sailed wide. Don't know if it caught a tip in front, but it didn't find the back of the net. Underneath the red, looking for a give and go play. Pointers setting up shop. John Calgen who will tip it off of the glass and over the blue. Murphy stepping in front. It's able to be swiped oh. back for him as he plays it through. And is the call off sides here? Yes, it is. It was certainly close. Puck was bouncing oh, so crazily. Here's another look at the rush. It's Finstrom carrying it through the neutral zone. Dropped it off to, I believe that was Smith who sent a shot right into the glove of Tallarico. As I was mentioning earlier, Wilson Northey just was on the ice for that last shift. He was had to leave the game with an injury earlier after that collision with the Denier. So good to see Northey, one of the captains for this pointer team back out there and looking no worse for wear. 7.51 left to go in the third period. Here's a shot ringing the iron in front. That was Andrew Pulius. He's been at the center of this entire Stevens Point offense all night. He's been absolutely buzzing, Alex. Pulius with a goal tonight. Found his tally in the first period to even things up at one to one. It was controversial because it was with the skate, but it was a really smart redirect. Didn't kick it in, just redirected it in with the skate blade. Lots of controversy in this yes. game. Goal getting waved off for the pointers when they thought it went in off a deflection. Luckily the other one stood and we're tied up at two. Murphy trying to work his way through. Gets it over the blue, trying to poke it free. Lost it as he was edging nearer. A nice play as it's swiped by Ryder, and he'll loft a backhand pass. Here come the Bulldogs with speed. Tie ends, nearing the front, sent a shot on. Sticked aside into the netting by Wagner, and the whistle with 6.53 left to go in the third period. That was great work by Wagner. Didn't give up a juicy rebound, used his stick to angle it up and out of play because I think if that goes off his pad or he just sends it to the side in that situation, there was a Bulldog crashing the net hard. But the way he was able to wreck that away, I mean, Rebound control is super important as a goaltender. That was big. Offensive zone draw one. Bulldogs on possession, it's Swade. Down low, put into the slot, looking for Hines, trying to get into position, but it's taken away from him. Turnover underneath the red, and here's a chance. All alone, it's kicked out. How did that one stay out? Puck looked to be on edge. Zach Heinz whiffed on it. That was the chance. The Bulldogs jonesing for one, really catching up in the third period with shots on net. Now 26 to 33, still in favor of the pointers. Luciani looking for his third. It's chested aside by Wagner. We're talking about Puglius and how he's come to play for the pointers. Luciani has been the best Bulldog tonight for Adrian. He's been so good, one of his best performances of the year. Moved over horizontally for Redding. Pushed down low and it's cycled by Luciani. Spodniak, one of the players for the Bulldogs who has NCAA Division I experience. Came over from AIC before he became a Bulldog. Denier pressed with fees as a Denier ultimately shoves him down. Ooh. Ill advised cross ice pass for Ryder there exiting the zone. You have to be absolutely sure on those. Going back to grab this one is Junker. He'll stop up behind the goal, skate it forwards, hits the tape of Northey. Sends this one rink wide. 
And off to the outside. Here's a chance for the pointers. And almost getting it there was Witherspoon. Spencer will pick up. Five minutes left to go. Game still tied, two to two. It almost feels like sudden death at this stage in the game. There's a shot ringing off the outside of the apron and lifted the length of the ice. I believe we will get an icing on the play, and we do. What a game this has turned out to be. NCAA Division III quarterfinals. Yeah, I was just saying it. At this stage in the game, any goal would feel like a game winner. And Heinz, great chance there. Puck was just bouncing on him. Stevens Point, end of the rink getting loud. Cheering on their team. The Bulldogs are getting loud too. Bulldog fans, that is. Aaron, Atmosphere ramping up. Arrington Ice Arena coming alive here in Adrian, Michigan. Fans from both sides showing up today to support their teams. A long drive for the pointers of Wisconsin Stevens Point. Not so far a drive for the hometown Adrian College Bulldogs. Down low it's Heenigan. We'll wrap this up top for Chiarino. Lifted up in neutral. Klein over. Babiak connected with Summers. Walking it in to the slot with a shot on wide glove side as it rims back up top to the stick of Cam Babiak. Austin Klein looking for an opportunity but he lost it with one too many fancy moves. Quickly pushed up Summers. Murphy, a backhand looking for the tip in front was Summers once again. That was a great pass by Murphy. Saucered it so it sat perfectly under the tape of Brad Summers. This is turned over underneath the red and then taken away by Ide. Stewart. Gets this over and a nice Back check made by Adinie. Swade looking to create some speed. Fighting for it here. And it's blown Ooh. down for the offsides. Oh, that one was close. They got the zone entry and then the puck got knocked away. If you look at this here, I don't think that was offsides because the Bulldogs get the zone entry. It gets knocked away, but it doesn't come all the way outside the blue. Enns was able to hold it in, but the referee said that he thought it came outside the blue line. That's what Enns is arguing right now, but faceoff's going to come out to the neutral zone. Neutral zone draw with 3.20 left to go. Swade wins it back as he was oppressed by Finstrom. With speed, it's Swade who tries to flex it around. Finstrom breaking things out for Stevens Point. Moving free is Thies. A loose puck on the doorstep, and it's cleared the other way. Here comes Heinz. Has some speed to get the dump in, but didn't have anybody behind him to be able to pass to, so he'll skate off. Not realizing behind him, Aramatrio was racing up the ice as he was going for the line change. Two thirty-nine left in this third period. You get the feeling this <laughs> this next goal could decide it. So tight! What a game this has been. A two-to-two -two hockey game live at. Arrington Ice Arena as Matu Spodniak soaks a shot coming off of the point as it's sent back down low. Tallarico oh. went to cover it up but lost control. Scary right there. Oh. That could have almost re been really bad as another turnover now in favor of the Bulldogs as Luciani finds his way to it. Pushed into the boards by Ide. I'll tell you one thing, that's not the way you want a game like this to be decided. Got to be careful. Adinie. Making the play, going back to Klein. And he'll feather it off of the boards. Chiarino pulling up, a save made by Tallarico, and it's kept out. Look at the point of release there, deceptive from Chiarino. Pulled it into his body. Pouliès moving it over. Traveled through the slot, 145 remaining. 
Redding couldn't control it. Here's a shot kicked out by Tallarico. Stewart pulls up, puts it low and outside to the blocker. Buck 30 left in the game. Humberstrom moves it over. Chiarino walks his way through. And this is played up into the netting as we'll get a whistle. Tensions flaring here at Arrington Ice Arena. Things really getting interesting in playoff hockey. And I don't know if they're telling Adrian they can't make a change. They shouldn't be able to make a change because they sent the puck out of play in their defensive zone. So the same guys should have to stay on the ice. So it's the same unit of Alessio Luciani, but two Spodniak, Matt Redding, will stay out as the forward line. It's Austin Klein and Cam Babiak. Moberg will step in with the captain, Luciani, for the draw. Stevens point band playing Don't Stop Believing. Fitting at this stage of the game with just over a minute left. Play to the slot, a tipped puck. It's kept in and working for it. There are the pointers. Klein works it around for Babiak. Spodniak trying to get it out. Bulldogs out of breath with a minute remaining. This high shot off the glass. You said it, Adrian needs to get it out. They're exhausted. Huge hit from Hennigan from behind, it looked like. This Injured Bulldog down. That was right in the numbers on uh, Matt Redding, who's down. We're going to step aside while he's attended to. Actually, he looks to be okay. Never mind, never mind. We'll stay here. Ooh, that one looked like it was right from behind on Redding, but. We are getting word to the other quarterfinal matchup between UNE and Utica has finally ended. It's Utica who took the victory in overtime. So we'll see how that affects the playoffs going forward. They advance to the Frozen Four, punching their ticket. Fifty seconds flat. Face off, one back, and played to a Dinier. They Waning moments of regulation. They desperately need to break this puck out. It's been in the Bulldog zone for close to two or three minutes now. A step up hit from Heinz. Worked around as Ryder gets to it first. Will saucer it and ends will tip it out. I believe this will be icing. And wow. it's not as we continue on, surprisingly enough. 23 it seconds left to go. Barely made it over the goal line, so it kind of makes sense. With speed, Junker. Moves to the outside. Will circle around the way. Cycle ensuing. Stewart, a shot. It's blocked in the slot. Kept alive. Under 10. Six to go. This high shot taken. Adinie will play this into the corner. And this game is going to take to overtime. In unbelievable fashion, a back and forth game between the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point and Adrian College. The quarterfinal matchup here from Arrington Ice Arena is gonna find its way into extra innings here, Calvin. Yeah, I think it's fitting the way this game has been. It's back and forth, teeter-totter of momentum, both teams with great chances. Stevens Point was really knocking on the door there for the last three or four minutes of that period. But Adrian hung in there, they're gonna get to the dressing room able to take a breather and uh, that's what they needed. They kind of escaped out of the end of that period with the way that the pointers were pressuring. So a two to two even deadlock score. The same way that we started the third period is the way we'll skate into the overtime period. And Alex Herman and Calvin Keyes here on ACTV will step aside just for a second and return with the overtime period of this quarterfinal NCAA playoff matchup after the break. We continue to take pride and learn from Asa Mahan's leadership today.
161 years of commitment to harnessing the power of creativity, ingenuity, community, and academic excellence. I believe that if you get your degree here, the world is going to feel like it's shrinking. As you anxiously await all of the amazing experiences that will define your college years, you stand today, students, on the threshold of one of the most magical times in your life. Welcome to Adrian, Michigan. We're located in a proud college town. Adrian College is situated just 45 minutes from Ann Arbor, Detroit, and Toledo. We're very excited to show you just a little bit of what AC has to offer. This is the gateway to our campus. Welcome to the place that we believe will change the rest of your life. AC features one of the most well-rounded educational experiences in the country. We offer over 60 different academic majors and 10 academic institutes, as well as dozens of student organizations. Year after year, we've been ranked as one of the nation's best colleges, including being one of the most innovative institutions in the U.S. for our medical programs. Our campus is simply beautiful.
Our student to faculty ratio is an incredible 13 to one. That means more attention for you and a much better overall learning environment. We know how to put together an education that is life changing. And these are just some of the highlights. From our communication arts program, to our many performing arts, to the home of business on campus, to our sciences and medical studies, we have the spaces where you can grow into the professional that you want to become. Our first year student experience is award winning. You'll make lifelong friends here, meet mentors, and maybe even meet that special someone. The Kane Student Center is open 24 hours a day, and there's a lot going on here. The Bulldog Beanery has all of your hot drinks. Pause and Go is our on-campus convenience store. The bookstore is where you'll get all of your Bulldog gear, and you can just hang out and study in the skyboxes. Not far away is the Shipman Library. The Shipman has quiet, relaxing spaces for you to study in. You can check out books from thousands of libraries around the country, and the shipment is open 24 hours as well for your convenience. There are hundreds of learning opportunities on campus. In addition to the arts and beautiful facilities, Adrian College is known for its athletic programs. There is nothing like a Saturday game day here in Adrian. The Bulldog football team are 11 time MIAA champions. At Docking Stadium, fans watch soccer, lacrosse, football, and more. Just a few hundred yards away, Adrian College's basketball teams compete. In addition to basketball, fans can enjoy wrestling, acro and tumbling, and volleyball here. We also have a state-of-the-art weight room available to all of our students. When things heat up too much on campus, you can cool off with our ice sports. Our NCAA ice hockey teams are constantly battling in the national playoffs. Just a quick walk down the service drive, we feature one of the best baseball and softball programs in the nation at our level. Soon you'll be able to cross the street and watch men's and women's rugby take to the pitch as well. Our rowing, crew, and top-ranked bass fishing programs compete out of the Adrian College Boathouse. A gorgeous facility, just a 15-minute drive north on Devil's Lake. Our students know how to relax in their downtime. When they're not out and about, we have dozens of housing options on campus. With apartments right in the mix of things, you can pick what works best for you. We've also recently renovated a few of our housing options. Adrian College is a Methodist-affiliated institution that has been changing lives since 1859. The modern liberal arts education offered by our faculty is unrivaled. We can't wait to have you on campus and show you around. Visit adrian.edu to schedule a full campus visit today. We'll see you soon. Dear College Sports. Dear College Sports. Dear College Sports. There's light at the end of the tunnel. We can see it. A return to normal and all the things we love about sports. We're filled with hope just thinking about it. Fans in stadiums and arenas, the hugs, high fives, and dog piles, the championship moments, even the heartbreaking losses. They're coming. While this pandemic is not over, it continues to impact our lives. You've taught us to be resilient even in the face of adversity. To control what we can control and put the greater good before ourselves, we've put those lessons to work. We've found strength in each other, even when we were kept apart. We've found unity across campuses, conferences, and divisions. We've found out our voices carry weight. Weight we'll continue to use for positive change. If 2020 taught us anything, it's that nothing's guaranteed. We lost experiences and opportunities we may have taken for granted. The bonding time with our second families, the taste of a hard-earned victory, the comeback stories. Now, 
We're ready for the greatest comeback you've ever seen. To campuses, classrooms, and competition. The moments together, face to face, hand in hand, arm in arm. More celebrations in uniform and graduations in cap and gown. You take us to places we never imagined. You hold us to a higher standard. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a future full of promise. We see a better world for you, for all of us, for college sports. Adrian College is a pinpoint like no other. With our 77 undergraduate degrees, 47 majors, and 21 broad fields of study, Adrian has a one-of-a-kind, hands-on learning experience for everyone. Do you want to visit the campus of Adrian College in person? Visit adrian.edu forward slash campus hyphen visit. Again, that's adrian.edu forward slash campus hyphen visit. Come take in the beautiful facilities at Adrian College for yourself. A scramble in front and spoil the action! Oh! Goes and shoots and scores! A back hitter moving over Murphy! Where's Spencer? Spencer walks and Spencer scores! In the slot! Back inside Arrington Ice Arena, the stage is set for a thriller. It didn't take regulation, and now we find ourselves in overtime. The score tied two to two. Teams about to get ready to take the ice for what's gonna be a spectacle here at Arrington Ice Arena. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alex Herman, joined alongside by Calvin Keyes. We saw two goals in the first period. We saw two goals in the second period. We're not going to see two goals in overtime. We're not going to see two One. goals in overtime, but we saw no goals in the third period. So it's going to take overtime to decide this playoff game. And this has been just one fun ride on both sides. What do you think both of these teams are going to look to do here in the overtime period? Score a goal. I mean, <laughs> that's what you need to do to win. Just joking. But uh, in all seriousness, I think for Steven's point, they're doing a good, lot of good things on offense. I think they need to shut down Adrian's transition game defensively. And then for the Bulldogs, I think they need to be more cohesive on the break out of their own out of their own zone because they've been getting pinned in their own end a lot. But overtime playoff hockey, sign me up. I'm it, ready. It, it doesn't get any better I'm than ready. this. I mean, in a packed house, Arrington Ice Arena, one of the best places that you can come and watch a college hockey game. Two great teams. You, University of Wisconsin Stevens Point and your Adrian College Bulldogs. I, I can't wait to get this one underway. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, I know we said earlier that Utica defeated their opponent earlier on, but that game's still an OT to our knowledge right now, correct? I believe that one is officially ended. Who are they facing off against? They are playing University of New England. Okay. And I believe, and I will get confirmation on the score, it was a five to four overtime victory in favor of the Utica Pioneers. Pioneers, okay. 
That's a team that the Bulldogs faced off early on in the season. Those were a couple of really, really entertaining games. So the road would not get easier for Adrian if they were able to get the OT winner. I don't know what the holdup is right now. There's not much going on. Teams gathering by their benches. I think probably what you're seeing here, officials letting the ice settle a little bit, some wet patches along the ice. And you see a packed crowd there that's it's been the scene for the majority of this game, that being the Wisconsin Stevens Point side. Yeah, They're made, that's a long drive too, all the way from Stevens Point, Wisconsin, and came out to support their team, got to respect it. Great crowd on both sides. I think it's really cool, as you mentioned, how the women's hockey team here at Adrian has their own little personal uh, section behind the Stevens Point goal, and they've been cheering with great fervor throughout this game. So. Things will start even strength. Five on five hockey, overtime, next goal wins. 20 minute periods until a winner is found. Next goal in this one will be the game winner. That's all we know. Who scores it remains to be seen. The story unfolds here at Arrington Ice Arena. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Alex Herman, and Calvin Keyes here on ACTV. So happy to have you all join us from wherever you may be watching tonight. We hope you're enjoying your evening of NCAA hockey, sitting aside friends and family, enjoying company. During this last intermission, it's the time where you look around the dressing room and you think, who's gonna be the hero? Who's, who's gonna, gonna step up, make a big play, be the difference in this game? Where there hasn't been a whole lot to separate these teams. Stevens Point came out hot, and then as the game wore on, looked like Adrian played the better third period. And then the closing stages of regulation, the pointers really fired back, had some great chances. You see the stats on the screen right now. Pretty even. 36 to 28 are the shots in favor of the pointers. They've led for the entire game in that category. However, they've not been up, but have been evening the game piece by piece. Equal power play time for each squad as well, both one for three. Don't think the save metrics were accurate there, though. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we play some hockey here sooner rather than later. It, it looked like the official just threw the puck the length of the ice to see if it would stop in any puddles because that does happen sometimes when you over Zamboni the ice surface and you flood it just a little bit too much, extra water. That is what they're doing right now, skating through those patches that are left streaking on the ice. So we apologize the delay to the overtime period. Get a good look at Jaden Shields right there. He set up Matus Spodniak for a game winner in the opening game of the season. That was a big moment. Chase Spencer, who we see now, has had a really good season. Spencer, a junior from Georgetown, Ontario. Very deep decor that Adrian has. Shields is from right back home in Royal Oak, Michigan. Mick Hennigan, he's got a lot of ice time tonight. Junior from Niles, Illinois. Played D1 hockey at Alabama Huntsville before transferring to Stevens Point. I think Alabama Huntsville now a defunct program. I don't believe they're competing at the NCAA D1 level anymore. Hennigan's been really good. We see the coaching staff for Adrian, Adam Krug. Adam Phillips and then Matthew Thompson out of the screen. And then of course, Johnny Costello, the equipment manager. And there we see the Stevens Point bench rocking out, jumping around a little bit. They look loose. They don't look nervous at all. They're ready to go. The women's hockey team holding up the, the son of head coach Adam Krug. He's having a great time bouncing around, enjoying the game. That's awesome. They're on TV. Nothing beats playoff hockey. <laughs> Great Stevens point support as we talked about traveling to the game. <laughs> Take a look at the officiating crew. They've been doing a great job tonight. This is a big honor for them too to be officiating this game. Adrian College Band and again another reminder follow us on our socials. YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, like us on Facebook, follow us on TikTok, all at Adrian College TV. 
women's ah. hockey team came up a little bit short last weekend, losing 2 nothing in the NCAA quarterfinal to Hamilton College. That was a really tight game. You got to call that one, Alex. Yep. That was a fun one. Not the way that the women's team expected their season to end. They were so close to moving on to the Frozen Four, had such a strong season all the way through, and a number of All-American players elected after season's end, too. So yeah. huge congratulations out to them and Coach Sean Skelly for a great effort yeah. in the 22-23 season. You know, while we have a minute, I mean, you know, regardless of whether we get to keep calling games this season, it's been great working with you this year, partner. I appreciate it. Both of us it. freshmen here at Adrian hopping on the mic for this season's games, and, yeah, it's been a pleasure. It's been awesome to be able to call the action with you, Calvin. As many games as we can get in here at Arrington Ice Arena. Never fails to amaze me to see what happens during these oh. games. And it's been an absolute pleasure. Even the backup goalie is getting into it. Who is that? I think that's Alex Proctor. Or no, that's Ma not Proctor. Mattia Matthias Smith, it looks like. What is going on right now? This is so odd. It, it's interesting to <laughs> me. I, the only time I've really seen a delay for ice like this in, is in some of the outdoor games that we get in, in the NHL because of weather conditions. But no weather conditions here inside Harrington Ice Arena. And I think finally we're going to get the green light to get things started. Crowd coming alive here at Arrington Ice Arena. Tensions flaring. 20 minutes up on the score clock. And overtime hockey is underway here at the AIA. No matter who wins, we know that Matias Smith, backup netminder for the pointers, has got the moves. He was breaking it down on the bench there. Next goal wins for whoever strikes first. Skating back, it's Spencer. That was a crazy moment. Looked like that shot went right off the side of the goal to start for the pointers. Heinz going back for a second. What a move, walking through to Swede. And he lost it on the release. Had an open net if he could hold on to it. The Bulldogs were looking to strike early. Spencer fought off of the puck there by Humberstone. As this is easily played into the glove of Tallarico as we'll take a whistle. Can we take a second glance at that move from Zach Heinz, showing off why he was selected to represent Team USA at the World University Games a couple months ago, won a silver medal with them. We see Tallarico cooling off a bit. Got to stay composed. Matus Spodniak, he had a big OT winner. Opening weekend of the season against top-ranked Utica. Could he pull out some more magic? We'll see. Down low here, Spodniak working it up. Luciani, a three-on-two broken up. He rips a shot, that one wide. Ryder playing it back down low. Wrapped around the kick plate, but bounced off of a bulldog stick. This is played up into the chest of Tallarico as he'll hold on for the stop. So look at Iowa Denier. Uh, we were talking about Hennigan for the pointers, how he was a transfer from Alabama Huntsville. That's where Denier played at the NCAA D1 level before coming to Adrian as well. Native of Columbus, Ohio. Huge guy. Tough to get around him with the reach he has. Face off one back, contested by Calgon. Flexes it up the near side boards, tied up 2v2 puck battle. Breaks out, Potosha, a bouncer off the glass. May chases after it, but it's worked by the stick of Wagner. Babyak sends it in down low, wraps around the corner. Potosha, once again there, Working back after it as Calgin will take a backhander underneath the red. Babyak moving back down low to Calgin once more. Potosha now to Babyak. Right point. That shot taken, deflected up into the netting, and once again stopped for a whistle. Two minutes into OT. It's been pretty quiet so far. Yeah, there's, 
you play almost a little bit more conservative in these sort of scenarios where your season's really on the line. Got to be careful, mind your P's and Q's in your own end before you think about playing offense. Luciani trying to win it back. Almost a takeaway for Spodniak. That pass shook around the body of Finstrom. Luciani overskated, but then got back to it. That was close to being offside. Back for Spencer, looking towards the front. A shot blocked off of the backside of Finstrom, and that chance rattled off the outside of the goal cage. This is set up and sent from way downtown, paddled aside. Finstrom gets this over for Ide. Redding steps in to turn it over. Here's Matu Spodniak, has a trailer, a shot coming over, open net, but it was Spodniak who had fell to the ice. Noah Finstrom slid in to break up that pass. Great play. Spencer will pick up the pace and Ooh. it's whistled down for the offsides. That's the right call, Riley Murphy a little bit too eager to get into the O zone. Two good chances. Three minutes into the overtime period for the Bulldogs. Some fanned on opportunities, both of which could have been the game. Adinier puts oh. this over, a bobbled shot from outside in the neutral zone by Wagner. You can attest to this as a goaltender. Sometimes those long shots are tough to track, huh, Alex? That they are. Sometimes you never know which way that the wind is going to blow it or if it might take a hop, skip and a bounce on the ice surfacing, hitting a rut, icing think, waved off. I think there's some wind going across the rink here. Could be, you never know. A little bit of a breeze. Oh, and a scary chance in front. And Tallarico lost it in between his pads, but luckily was cleared out. Here's Murphy to the oh. right wing and again, whistled down for the offsides. Ooh. Again, I think it's the right call. Looked offside to me. It was certainly close. But <laughs> still, that was crazy. Brad Summers almost knocked it into his own net at the other end. It's Swade and Pulias. Pulias having a goal this evening. The second, which was scored in the first period to make things one to one. Heinz is pushed into the boards by Gonrowski. And the pointers will look to break out. Successfully, his sheer Reno pulls off and works off of his man. That was Jake Swade. High stick. This will get blown dead as yep. I think Pulius knocked that one out of the air with his twig above shoulder height. 15.47 left to go in the overtime period from Arrington Ice Arena. Alex Herman and Calvin Keyes here on ACTV. NCAA Division III quarterfinal matchup. Winner advances to the Frozen Four. Who's going to punch their ticket tonight, Alex? We'll find out. Moberg checked into the boards. Spencer back to Chase. Trying to get it to Spodniak. And the backhand pass was unsuccessful. Spencer, up the gut. Gets it to Redding. Slowly picking up, sends a shot on net from way outside and it's sticked up into the netting by Wagner. This OT period is going by really slowly. We're not even five minutes in yet. It's yeah. felt like quite a while. It's really dragging. Neither of these sides want to give up any room, time, or space as they're fighting hard for the win that will keep their season alive. Here's Finstrom. Tried to go up and over. Klein played him well and will force this puck into the corner. A blind cool. backhand pass is turned over as it gets to Luciani. Redding wraps it in hard down low and moves back the other way. Babyak will step off of the blue and get this to Spagnolo. 
Babiak back to the right blue. Received the pass and it bounced over his stick. Bulldogs will have to retreat momentarily. This to Luciani. Good look from Klein, getting that one up quickly. Calgin will try and interject. Ooh. There's a chance. It's down low towards the right side. Thies tried to work it around. Potosha all alone. Gave it up right on top of the crease and a tipped pass broken up by the paddle of Talarico. He'll stop that one. Here's a rush. Calgin onsides this time. Puts this one and looking for the outside post but off the target. Here's a tip chance, blocker to side. A great save and a scramble, it's loose. Kicks back up top, Adinie will saucer it in. In between the hashes, nobody could pick up loose change. Spagnolo back down low as Calgin is pushed against with Nicholas Aramateria. Oh, and a John hit. Calgin just stepped on the puck. That's a good no call. Stepped right on it. Chiarino. Moving in, drops back, a shot. It's blocked by Adinie. Seems like he felt that one. Took one for the team there, Alex. Here's a chance, and it's muscled wide and wraps to the left blue. Hannigan got it back down. Dangerous area, nearing the front. Bulldogs trying to take it away. They are able to clear it, and it rolls all the way down, but it is not an icing call as it's waved off. Pointers turning the tide the last minute or so. Witherspoon with a shot, and that one sailed high, just barely missing the crossbar. Hit the red dasher and popped up into the netting. That was a howitzer. Yeah, you look at Witherspoon just skating up of the ice. He's crafty, quick release, and Tallarico, I think, able to get his blocker on that, and it went up and out of play. Nick Tallarico, he's been good. The senior from Surrey, British Columbia, wants to keep his season going. A miscue on the draw, and finally puck is dropped. Spencer who plays it free. Heinz, a burst of speed. Almost oh. got loose. Sway just got hacked down. Tie up in the right corner. It finds its way to Swade who played it into the slot. But it's turned over. Spencer with some speed Ooh. if he can get there is awarded Ooh. the icing. It was close. Had to hustle back for that. Twelve nineteen left in overtime. Oh man, neither side giving an inch here. We've got Luciani. He'll face off against Witherspoon on the draw. So this is tied up, and then one back by the pointers. Down low, a circling pass moved over. Looking for the baseball bat swing there was Luciani. Spodniak to Luciani, trying to break free. Oh. And a hard hit down low, arm up on the play, and it's going to be whistled down. Yeah, the puck was gone, and Brett Humberstone just pile drive Alessio Luciani into the boards way after the play. So here's a big power play chance coming up for the Bulldogs. Humberstone doesn't like it, but two minutes for roughing is the call against him. And it was, it was pretty clear. These are kind of the calls that can potentially make or break a game, especially in the overtime period. It's five on four as Coach Krug tries to draw up some strategy without getting an, a timeout call. Eleven fifty-four left to go. We'll see what they can make of it here. 
It's played back to the left blue. The other way for Spodniak. Shields, ends, fires, and a save made by Wagner. We've seen Ty Enns score a goal or two from that spot on the ice, but again, it's just Wagner so positionally sound. Doesn't really give Enns much to shoot at, although that's almost like his office there on the right side circle. This draw, one back and played by the pointers. It sent the length of the ice. Will kill off some time for them. Shields, a long way up for Redding. All the countless hours on practicing special teams leads to this moment, Alex. Here's Spodniak trying to stuff it on the short side, but he couldn't. That hit off of an official. Ends, winds up, shot was blocked. Here's Shields, 123 left to go in the power play. Shields right side. A saucer pass going over. Ends back to Shields. Has Spodniak on the right, but gives back to Ends. Fired a shot. Looked like there was some contact on the stick. So that didn't help the shooting motion. Spodniak back to Shields. Puts this one on and fighting off traffic. Saved by Wagner. Here's Spodniak winding up. Shields with a shot and a blocker save made by Wagner. Incredible stuff from the goaltender from Indianapolis. Perfect setup here. Shields launching one from the cheap seats. There's the initial chance. Looked like Luciani may have got a tip on it. Comes back, winds, fires, and that may have been off the knob for Wagner there. 56 seconds left on the Adrian power play. I was mentioning, this is why you spend a lot of time working on your power play or on the other side of things for Stevens Point, your penalty kill. For moments like this, season on the line, who can execute? 56 left on the five on four power play opportunity for the Bulldogs. 10.49 left in overtime. Draws one back and hits off the top boards. Massive clearance. Pallarico will play it around. This pass connecting with Redding. Drop for Spodniak, has speed. A nice move to the backhand, forehand, loose, and it stays out, the arm up. And it's whistled penalty. down, and I think the Bulldogs are going to go five on three. Crowd on their feet. They know what this means. They're going to get 35 seconds of five on three hockey. Let's take another look. Spadnia coming up ice with some real steam. Took a, I think he was hooked right on the wrists and then fell over. See what the signal is. It's, did you see the signal for the penalty? I did not. Stevens Point is going to call timeout here as they try to collect themselves facing an extended five on three time. Oh boy, sudden death OT, Bulldogs go to the five on three after this. back here at Arrington Ice Arena. The timeout taken by Wisconsin Stevens Point after they took a second penalty, leaving them five on three for the next 35 seconds. It's sudden death overtime. Game is tied two to two, 10-29 left to go in the first extra frame. What a scene this is. Can't make this stuff up. Bulldogs will be up two skaters for about 30 seconds. That's not a ton of time, so it's pretty pivotal that you win this faceoff if you're Alessio Luciani. And on the other side of things, I think for Wilson Northey, this is one of the biggest draws of the season for him. See who wins it. Luciani cleanly gets it back. Shields will step, ends, firing in the chest. They score! Matos Maniak! The Bulldogs are going back! to the Frozen Four for the second straight year in a row. Do you believe it? Unbelievable. 
Luciani won the draw back. It was played up top to the blue, moved over. The rebound was bobbled out. Spodniak was all alone and was ready to put it home. And the pointers are sent home packing. Wow, who else but the Slovak sensation? Matus Spodniak. He's had multiple OT winners and he finds another one when it matters most. The Bulldogs take it 3-2 and punch their ticket to an epic rematch with Utica in the Frozen Four. Oh my goodness. And before anything, we have to extend a huge stick tap out to pointer netminder Ryan Wagner as he held his own ever so valiantly through 60 minutes of regulation as well as the overtime period. Yeah, I think this game could have gone either way. It was just two good teams going to battle. Props to Stevens Point, they have nothing to hang their head about. Bulldogs just able to find the slight edge there on the five on three and sudden death OT, but heck of a game has to be one of the, I would say probably one of the best games in NCAA D3 hockey history, let alone this season. Wow. No words can describe the scene here at Arrington Ice Arena. And there you see the best tradition in all of the hockey. That is the handshake line between two extremely respectable clubs in NCAA Division III play. The University of Wisconsin Stevens Point Pointers and your Adrian College Bulldogs. What an absolute whirlwind of emotions as it's the Bulldogs and Matus Spodniak who gets the game winner, extending the season for the white, black, and gold. This is uh, Matus Spodniak's final season of college hockey. He's a graduate student playing his fifth year because of COVID, I believe. And uh, yeah, he said, I don't want my season to be over. Let's keep dancing, baby. Going to the Frozen Four, how about it? So it will be a little while to find out where the Frozen Four is going to be held. Likely from the info that we have here up in the booth at this very second, it will be hosted by Utica University in Utica, Univer in Utica New York at the Odd, home of the Utica Comets. That would be incredible because that's, that's home ice in the next matchup against Utica in the Frozen Four. That'll be tough especially because we played that team very tight in the, or Adrian played that team very tight in the opening weekend of the season. But again, I just, Stevens Point put up a heck of a fight. It was an amazing game. I give props to both these teams. Doesn't get any better than that. Sudden death winner, college hockey and the Stevens Point players are gonna salute their sizable away contingent that came to watch them play and they're gonna get some applause from the home fans as well. Great show of respect and sportsmanship. And phenomenal hockey team whose season has been ended, but really a remarkable campaign for the Pointers. Wow, just an unbelievable scene. The Bulldogs waiting to give their final stick taps here at Arrington Ice Arena. At 10.22 left in the first overtime period. A winner by Matus Spodniak is sending the Bulldogs for the second straight year to the Frozen Four. What a win. They fought hard, they battled back, they faced a lot of adversity, and the sky's the limit for this team. An unbelievable ending here at Arrington Ice Arena. We'll see it one more time. Clean face-off win. We talked about how important that was. Jaden Shields grabs it, sets up ends, and Matus Spodniak, Johnny on the spot. That'll do it here. Thank you for tuning in here on Adrian College TV. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, 
We thank you so much for tuning in here on ACTV. Alex Herman and Calvin Keyes, a huge congratulations out to the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point. They played a great game here tonight in the quarterfinal matchup of the NCAA Division III playoffs. The Bulldogs prevail tonight here three to two with an overtime winner from Matu Spaniak. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in and a good luck to the Bulldogs as they look to find another national championship win in Utica, New York. Dear College Sports. Dear College Sports. Dear College Sports. There's light at the end of the tunnel. We can see it. A return to normal in all the things we love about sports. We're filled with hope just thinking about it. Fans in stadiums and arenas. The hugs, high fives, and dog piles. The championship moments. Even the heartbreaking losses. They're coming. While this pandemic is not over, it continues to impact our lives. You've taught us to be resilient even in the face of adversity. To control what we can control and put the greater good before ourselves, we've put those lessons to work. We've found strength in each other, even when we were kept apart. we found unity across campuses, conferences, and divisions. we found out our voices carry weight. Weight will continue to use for positive change. If 2020 taught us anything, it's that nothing's guaranteed. We lost experiences and opportunities we may have taken for granted. The bonding time with our second families, the taste of a hard-earned victory, the comeback stories. Now, we're ready for the greatest comeback you've ever seen. To campuses, classrooms, and competition. Moments together, face to face, hand in hand, arm in arm. More celebrations in uniform and graduations in cap and gown. You take us to places we never imagined. You hold us to a higher standard. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a future full of promise. We see a better world for you, for all of us, for college sports. Continue to take pride and learn from Asa Mahan's leadership today. And the slam. 161 years of commitment to harnessing the power of creativity, ingenuity, community, and academic excellence. I believe that if you get your degree here, the world is going to feel like it's shrinking to 